Linda says we're live. Okay. As long as we don't say anything. Hmm? As long as we don't talk, then they won't know. I just, just think that the sound's out on the computer. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll go ahead and begin. Welcome to the Morgan County Council meeting of November 10th, 2020. Uh, I believe all members are present, although Member Swan and Member Newton are participating by telephone. Uh, do we have both of you on the phone? Sarah? Yes, sir, I'm here. Okay, Member Newton is here. Sarah, are you there? So Sarah hasn't joined yet. Uh, Member Cannon will give our prayer and pledge of allegiance. Our Father in heaven, as we come before thee this evening, we are grateful for the opportunity we have to meet together as a community and as representatives of, of the community to discuss the current issues in Morgan County. Father, we ask for thy presence to be here this evening, that we will have a spirit of understanding and always keeping in mind those who we represent. We're grateful for the blessing it is to live in a free country and for the reminder of the freedoms which we enjoy. And we say these things in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> All right, are there any changes or proposed changes to the agenda? Several minutes. Motion to approve the agenda without the minutes. I'll second. Motion and a second to approve the agenda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, declaration of conflicts of interest. Actually, I'm going <laughs> on my on my item number twelve. Uh -huh. uh, my in-laws live up Deep Creek, um, so I'm still going to be. Well, I'm I'm still going to vote though. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, that brings us to our public comment period. If there are any members of the public that would like to speak to any uh, items that are not on our agenda for a public hearing, I don't believe we have a public hearing tonight. Right? So if you, anyone would like to address the council on matters generally, please feel free to do so now. Uh, my name is Dave Pitcher. Sound like there's a mic, and I'd like to just pass out this map again. So, this is uh, the Heather Meadows subdivision. Most of you are aware of the issue with the uh, county there. A couple lot owners have filed a lawsuit against the county because of uh, permits and that sort of thing. Um, the uh, lot owners um, had come to an agreement, or some of the lot owners had come to an agreement with Peterson Pipeline to just go ahead and uh, prepay Peterson Pipeline for all their connections so that they would uh, turn on the hydrants. Um, on this map, those are the hydrants in blue. Um, it was with the understanding that uh, the county uh, has always said that they wouldn't issue permits to somebody that wasn't a member of Peterson Pipeline or had uh, installed their own fire suppression system. Um, back in August, the council had a work session. I believe it was Mr. McConnell had actually pointed out 
Um, that just because there's existing hydrants there doesn't mean that these lot owners have a right to them, and that would be essentially benefiting from a service that they're not paying for. On this map, the, the stars circled in red are existing hydrants. Um, but now the county, uh, Mr. Evans, a couple days ago, reversed all of that and is now basically saying that once the hydrants are on, blue, that he would issue permits to everybody, whether they were members of Peterson Pipeline or not. So I'm just at a total loss, and actually so is Peterson Pipeline. There's not a lot of love lost between us and Peterson Pipeline, but they're in full agreement that they just cannot comprehend why, for example, Lot 4 has a right to take water from the, you know, the red hydrant or the blue hydrant if they're not members of Peterson Pipeline, but Lot 3 does not. And why Lance would issue a permit to Lot 4 if they're not members of Peterson Pipeline, but he refuses to issue a permit to Lot 1 or certificates of occupancy of 3 and 4. It just makes absolutely no sense. We've gone from the county or Lance, and I think the whole council agreed that hey, just because you have a lot, I mean, this I would think this would go for any lot, let's say in Layton or Syracuse. Just because you have a lot, if you're not paying for your gas, doesn't mean you have a right to gas. If you're, just because you're, there's electrical somewhere in the street, doesn't mean you have a right to the electrical. Um, I don't see why water is any different. Just because there's a hydrant there, and the council agreed, just because it's there doesn't mean you have a right to it. We had settled this with Peterson Pipeline. Everything was ready to be signed on the dotted line. We had actually put the lawsuits on hold with the county for the last six months um, in anticipation of this settling. And then all of a sudden, Lance blows it up and totally reverses everything and says, hey, once the hydrants are on, it doesn't matter whether these people are members of Peterson Pipeline or not, I'll issue them a permit. So I don't expect. I, I've been to the council before. You guys know the, that I've been up here a couple times. I don't know what's going to happen or if the council can do or is willing to do anything. Peterson Pipeline simply requested that Lance treat it the same as he does every other, like Whittier Estates. He sends them an email that says, are you a member? Is this lot a member of Peterson Pipeline? And they reply with a yes or a no. But in this case, he's told them he doesn't care if they're members of Peter Center Pipeline or not, he'll issue the permits. And I just, I don't have, I, we just can't fathom what the heck's going on anymore. Um, again, we've tried to put the lawsuits on hold with the county, thinking that this was going to get resolved between Peterson Pipeline and the developer or lot owners, and now there's absolutely no way out because Peterson Pipeline doesn't want to turn on the hydrants for those lots that are there to have Lance turn around and issue permits to people that uh, aren't members of Peterson Pipeline. Thank you. So Mr. Pitcher forwarded a email to me today that includes in the chain correspondence from Lance. Will you just send that to, to uh, Trevor Kobe? Will you just send that to members of the council so that they have a chance to look at it? That email actually came from Trevor Cobain and his attorney. I talked to Trevor just before I came in here. He said he couldn't make it this evening. So he's fully aware of the situation, um, and that's the point. I mean, we, I personally don't so care. It would be your November 5th email, uh, Lance to Trevor Cobain, copying Jan Ferris. That's and Blaine well, Kerrigan? I believe so, yeah. Will you just forward that to all members of the council? Sure. Thank you for your time, Mr. Pitcher. <clears throat> Anyone else that would like to address the council as part of the public comment period? Motion to go to public comment. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, our first item on the agenda is Member Cannon, approval of economic manager contract for review. So Chad asked 
Darren Rogers, he is a member of the CED board and part of the interview process. I've asked him to be here tonight to present on this. We also have James Eber and Anissa here to answer any questions on that they would have. So please, Darren, if you would. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the council. It's my honor to be here tonight and to discuss the contract and the process that we went through to select um, this individual and company to accomplish the goal that um, we set out to um, fulfill. So I don't know what questions that you have, but I would like to entertain any questions that you might have about how we approach this recruitment and how we selected the individual for this contract. Are there any questions from the council? Are we discussing the contract right now, or are you asking about the process? I think you could ask about the process specifically. <coughs> yeah, I don't have well. any questions about the process. I just have contract questions. Okay. Well, just um, before we get into the contract questions, uh, we had five candidates apply for this position. Uh, we had three that uh, came with some solid experience but um, two really rose above. And I have to say that the person that we selected to go with met all of the tenants and requirements that we were looking for. We had to have someone that could come in and hit the ground running because we are like um, four months into this contract, or into this grant contract. So it leaves us eight months, and there's some great work that needs to get done. And clearly, clearly we are very fortunate and privileged to have uh, Mr. Ebert lead in this capacity to accomplish the three goals specifically that are articulated in the agreement and in the plan uh, to get us where we need to be in a short period of time. Uh, Mr. Ebert, before you get into the contract, I was very impressed. Uh, we made an offer late October, and within a 14-day period of time, he had reached out to members of the board to interview them. And he also put together um, an economic development plan. And I, I was just very impressed because this is exactly what we wanted uh, from this individual to come in hitting the pavement running, not having to give him a quick uh, tutorial on what's needed. And so I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Ebert to come here and sit in the chair here. And as questions avail themselves, I will invite him to a lectern to maybe address some of those questions. Um, just as a little bit of background information, I've been on the board just shy of three months, so I'm somewhat of a newcomer, um, but I've been <laughs> brought in under fire, and there's been a lot going on in the last three months, and I've yeah. read the plan, and I'm, I'm happy to work here uh, with uh, Morgan County, and what's really important is that the person that we hi hired for this position, it's a county plan, not a Morgan City plan, not a Mountain Green plan, it's a Morgan County plan. And uh, Mr. Ebert really has held conversations with each of the board members, and we've talked about our interests and, and concerns. And this is an opportunity for you to also bring forth some of those interests and concerns that you might have at this time. Um, just a little bit of a background about me. I don't think I was able to identify who I am. I am Darren Rogers, and I work for the Utah Department of Workforce Services. And I work in the capacity of economic and workforce development. And I'm assigned to the Wasatch Front North, and also the Wasatch Front Back. <laughs> so anyway, I'm really happy to be here today. So with that, I think we can move to the contract. And I, I don't know if you have the contract before you. Yeah, yes, we do. Thanks, Mr. Rogers. So, Member Kilmer, you said you had a question about the contract? <clears throat> well, I have a few. Okay. Mine's mostly discussion with the council since we just received this a little while ago. Or at least I did. I only got it just today and wasn't able to go through it until late this afternoon. Um, so my, my things are discussion with different terms of the contract and, and where we want to go as a council more than they are any kind of a negotiation with... I mean, I guess it could get to that point, but anyway, I just want some clarification on some of it and uh, my opinion on where 
where we should move with this contract so that it's a good contract for Morgan County. Okay. Do you have a specific question? I can answer the process. Uh, this has been part of the CED um, contract. It's a rural government, rural county grant. Um, I wrote the grant, applied for the grant through the state of Utah. Strongly encouraged through the grant requirements for a professional and economic development. We created the board. We updated the plan, the economic plan. I brought both of those back to the council for approval and we had to have a, a um, resolution by the county in order to set up that board. But we also reviewed that plan, brought it back every step of the way. As we've gone through this, um, in working out this contract, John sent me a basic contract. And so James and I have gone back and forth over setting this up to be effective and, and address the, not only the goals of the CED board, the Economic Development Committee, and the plan for Morgan County, but also to incorporate the general plan and in community development as well. So everything you see in there on the whereas is part of or taking, taken from those plans. And then in a scope and deliverables, those are taken out of that plan as well as the prior contracts for economic development for the county, as well as the roles and responsibilities. And then you get into the really the, more of the legal ease by the time you get down to the miscellaneous on a typical contract. <coughs> so if you have specific questions on any of those. So as I read through this, I had some concerns with the wording. I um, called Jan, talked to Jan about it. Um, he suggested we discuss some of these and make sure that they're clarified and we understand exactly what we're talking about here. If you go to... Um, what is it? Because for some reason it didn't print all the all of all the pages. It cut off a portion of them. So it's going to be number one, scope and deliverables. B, roles and responsibilities. Two I. <coughs> it says, contractor shall be responsible for all expenses incurred while performing services under this agreement. This includes automobile, truck, and other travel expenses. Then it goes on to say, with the exception of, and lists about every other expense you might have in operating a business there. If that was intended to only be in between that comma and that semicolon, then can we clarify that a little bit more? Because it could read that it's every single thing there is exempt and we're paying every business expense or we, we can exempt every business expense. So, as I understand the question, the, the expense that's listed as not being reimbursed, reimbursed is truck and other travel expenses. The qualification is with the exception of travel specifically requested or agreed upon in advance by the CED board. And Member Kilmer is asking, is that qualification only limited to truck and travel expenses? Or is it intended is to it pick up vehicle and license fees, the rest of the stuff in the list? So the qualification is all of the business expenses, other than specific things the CED would require, um, would be covered by the contract that would be myself. So if there's a comma that needs to be taken out because uh, that was in there accidentally, then we're, we're more than happy to take that. Well, and that's what I'm asking. I just want clarification on what it is we're saying there. Are, are we saying that the CED board has the ability to exempt all of those items? Okay. No. Yeah, so if we can just clarify that so that it is just at that one sentence. And, and I'm happy um, to leave it to uh, the board if the, the commission that passes, excuse me, the council that passes, to make those changes um, at, you know, if it's approved tonight. I don't have an issue with that. Yeah. Um, and really the intent was that as a business expense that will be covered by the contract fee for myself, uh, unless there's a specific thing that the CED board is going to require where I don't have a choice on whether or not I want to cover that expense, 
Um, and then the CED board would make a decision if they really wanted to cover those expenses or if it was a priority to do that. And I think that could be worded in there so that's clear. Right. Okay. And I'm happy to leave it, you know, to the morning to make that change up. Okay. So to be I, is that what you said? Yeah, it's, it's Romanet 2, and yeah, it's the list that, of Romanet. This includes automobile, truck, and travel expenses, and I think the qualification, if you use, okay. instead of using a comma, you used a parenthetical, okay. and said with the exception of those truck and travel expenses specifically requested or agreed upon in advance by the CED board, that would cover your issue. Yeah, it would. Okay. Yep. Where is that at again? Oh. So... Roles and, roles and responsibilities. Okay, gotcha. Page two. Yeah, we found it. <clears throat> so what I'm suggesting is that um, you take out the comma after expenses, and you open a parenthesis, and say with the exception of, and then add the word those, truck and, before travel, and then after travel, add the word expenses, specifically requested or agreed upon in advance by the CED board, and then close the parenthetical. Yes, thank you. Okay. Then next page, number two, term. Um, I don't have a problem with the first part of that and the second sentence. Um, I, I know this is being funded out of that grant, and that's the way it's written in the first first sentence there. The second sentence, I think the only issue I have there is the three-year period. I don't have a problem with mutual parties being able to negotiate to extend the term. I just, where you don't have funding, a funding source beyond June established for this, um, either, either scratch the three-year or maybe do a one year or something like that. And so, this is a, this is for me between the council to negotiate how do we how do we so want to proceed with that. So Mike and I talked to discussed it, James and I had discussed it, but one of the things that we had pointed out and is true of other contracts that we have on the on the docket tonight, is there's still a sixty day cancellation fee for lack if the funding doesn't come back through or we don't qualify for the grant through the state of Utah. But it, typically, in a long, this gives the county the ability that if it is happy with the services, it doesn't have to go through the, the long RFP process that we went through in Correct. filling this contract. And so that is why it's in there that way. There is still the ability for the council, if unhappy or CED board unhappy with work performed. Yeah, not, or I don't have any issue with the ability to negotiate for extending. It's just... A three-year, especially where that funding is based on year-to-year -year approvals. Mm -hmm. you, if you enter into a three-year contract, but you're only granted a one-year grant, you're now on the hook to pay for those two years. Yes, you do have that 60-day out, but wouldn't it just be more prudent to negotiate those one year at a time as you get that funding? I would argue that that's not how we've typically handled it with anyone who's performing a contract. We have the ability, if the, if the funding does not continue to end the contract at that point. But it, going through the RFP process, which was a two-month process that we just completed, it is not exactly a simple thing to open it up and redo it every year. You can do it if you're unhappy. No, no, not, not redo it. I said, so, I said leave in the negotiate for extension. It was just the three-year versus one-year or, or no specific term, just the ability to negotiate and extend the contract. So you're saying you could still you would continue it on, but you would do it annually instead of every three Correct. years? Yeah. But wouldn't you be doing well, that anyway? So let me, let me make forward? a suggestion. Okay. Because this is subject to the mutual agreement of the parties, it's not a ma it doesn't guarantee either party that the term is going to be extended. Correct. So why don't we leave the duration of the term for the same agreement? So you would simply say by mutual agreement, the parties may negotiate and extend the term for such additional period as the parties determine pursuant I'm, to such <coughs> negotiation. I'm good with that. And you then if that. there's a funding source for two years, it's two. If there's yeah. a funding source for one, it's one. Yep. All right. I'm good, I'm good with that. Okay. Then the next one is uh, three compensation, 3C, Romanet 1. Is that what you call that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Romanet 1. <laughs> I'm not sure if I ever knew that's what they were called. <clears throat> um, 
funding from TRT of twenty thousand dollars. I don't remember as a council we ever allotted money so out of TRT for this. We haven't, but this gives the option. So we we went back and forth on whether or not you. There are several things that are in the plan that that would be coming later on. So we wanted to recognize those his ability to come forward and ask for those additional, but that they have not been granted. So currently it is funded with A, 3A, and C is, we are not expecting if they, if they are completing, a DMO is a long process, so that could, if we decide to go that direction, that that could be funded that direction instead of expecting that to happen with just the original source. So that gives the ability to do so additional. So are you items. saying this is at the option of the county, the county may request? Yes, so you so, can request. So we need to add that. Yeah, that needs to be in there. We then. need to say at the request of the county, um, the contractor, are you, is this a mandatory for them if we request that they have to perform or is this? Do you want to speak to it, James, on how? Is, is this a may or is this a must? Um, really quickly, there is a under administrative, which I don't have. Okay, so under administrative, if you look at uh, five administration, um, it says five B, and it has lists. The CED board may makes recommendations to the city council commission. One additional services, which is the services that you're talking about. Uh, currently, contract extensions and areas of economic and community focus. So we put that under administration. So if the CED board comes back um, and from the CED board says we feel that the DMO is uh, vital for us moving this forward on a variety of reasons, they'll make that recommendation to the county council commission um, with the funding source in the amount. So it can come back through that process. So it's not written directly there, but it is written part of the contract. So. And, and that's, uh, thanks for identifying the method through which we would make that determination. But I think that what we would do in C is say, at, at the request of the county, given what you've said, following um, the recommendation of the county council pursuant to section five, contractor shall provide the following additional services. Darren, are, are you being the scribe for this? This is just chicken scratch. Hopefully it's being recorded. I, I've got a PDF and it's let, not letting me insert notes. But Oh, I thought you have the original. I can insert. If somebody has a handwritten a hard copy, I'll write on it. <clears throat> I've got a copy. I can print it. Just print one for me and I'll write these in. I'll just bring mine. Thank you. Hmm. Well, good, because the air printer is not on. Okay, Member Kilmer, you have another? So, another clarification. Well, I will go to um, miscellaneous L, first sentence, second line. It says, unless it is in writing and singed 
by the granting party. Just need a spelling check there. Should be signed. First sentence. Under L. Under L. Yeah. As long as it's not me, someone else can sing it. To stand up here and sing it to you. You can't. <laughs> you don't want me singing. You don't want me singing. <laughs> then. Make it interesting, anyways. Yeah. So then my next one is just clarification on roles of the CED versus the council and what what role. So in five administration, it indicates that the council shall designate the CED board for oversight of the contractor. What I want to know is what that oversight, def, you know, by definition, what is that telling them that they can and cannot do? Um, and I appreciate you bringing up the number five in the uh, going back to the county council. I just want to identify what it is, and maybe that's something we identify with the CED board in a contract there or in our operating procedures there, but what is it that we allow them to do that they don't have to come back to the council? Because I don't want them approving, I don't want this board approving expenses out of budgets that they don't control. Um, if it's a situation where they need to, then I suggest we create a budget for them and we give them a specific amount of money that they're allowed to spend without coming back to the board rather than just having um, them being able to approve expenses with this contractor where they can spend money out of uh, different funds without the council having approval. I think that crosses a line with what we're, you know, that we shouldn't be giving away. That so time. right now, the way it's written, the CED board oversees the grant. That's part of the resolution that we passed. They oversee the rural grant. That's the requirement of that grant. Okay. So we we brought back a budget and submitted that budget to the state of Utah. So we also answered the state of Utah on the follow through on that budget. So right now that is the only. And, and I'm more concerned about county budgets than I am the grant budget. The grant one I... So the, yeah, the CED board doesn't have authority any over any of the other budgets. They can make a recommendation and come to the board and present, or the council or commission and present, and that, but... That's exactly what I want to clarify. So so nowhere do, is, are they allowed, is the CED board allowed to give direction to this contractor where they have the right to invoice us for additional expenses out of a county budget without coming back to the council is that's my understanding and that is the way the ced board and is resolution has written. read this are you comfortable that this contract spells that out because i see i see places where it goes kind of back and forth where the ce board will do this if, if they always refer to 5b one two and three there maybe they'll never have that issue but I just want to make sure that that's clear when all of us are gone in two months except for Robert and Mike could I, could I just really quickly that's why I made it super clear in administration that the CED board will make by my contract because I have to protect myself because mm -hmm. I don't want to be in a position where the CED board and the commission is are at odds so I made it really clear from my end on the contract that the CED board would make a decision and give a recommendation to come before the full council for approval of anything that I'm doing um, because I just want to make sure that I'm covered and I'm not giving direction from another entity that causes me an issue with the commission. Okay. So what if we did in 5B, CED board makes recommendations to the county council commission for approval and then additional services, contract extensions, areas of economic and community focus, and for ex ex expenditure of funds. Mm -hmm. Does that work? Yep. Yeah, that's fine. That way we're clear. I think that will clear up my other ones. So that so for compensation three E, we've got the rural and economic development grant TRT funding based on council approval, which we just identified, correct? And then other sources identified by the client. Um, then go to uh, same miscellaneous, number four, down to determination. <clears throat> the only thing there, um, it says termination will be at the recommendation of the CED board. 
I just want that to be opened up to where the council is not required to have a recommendation in that favor, just that they should get a, a recommendation from the board, but it's still the council's decision whether this contract is terminated or not. And the only reason I say they should is if we have a board, we ought to be at least listening to their side of the story before we make decisions. So in, in, in doing this, one of the, I'm trying to pattern this after how you would do, and Chris, it's, I guess you've got an employee under the rec board, but the same type of thing, the oversight of the contract on the rec board for the facilities maintenance and for the administration of the recreation program came back through just the rec board. And where this, this is patterned exactly the same way, does the, does the final decision over the rec board manager come back to the council well, for I, a yes or a no? I, I think this agreement is a completely different agreement than what we have with the rec board. Or the rec How board. is that? If it's the <coughs> oversight is set up the same way as a set of funding and a recommendation with the board to take... I, I see it very, very similar, so I guess I don't see where the difference comes in. What makes it different in your eyes? I don't, I don't think they're even remotely similar. We're talking about that is 100% a county function over there. We've got an interlocal agreement with the other count, county uh, government agent entities, and we've been given a set of bylaws that we operate under, and they include the hiring and firing of those individuals. Um, we don't have that set up with the CED board. We have a set of funding that's all public funding on both cases, where, it, where it's taxpayer funding and there is a CED board by resolution of the council to, for oversight. The recommendation, the same thing applies on a tax collected for the recreation board. It's still public funding and, and subject to the same requirements of public funding. So we're, we're subject to the Open Public Meetings Act. We notice all of our meetings we bring back to the council for approval or recommendation. We followed all of those steps. So My concern is that the CED board does have a voice here, and it, it should be recognized in this process. And I, I don't think Member Kilmer is objecting to or asking that we not receive the recommendation. I think he's wanting to have language clarifying that we do, following a recommendation by the CED board, the county council makes the ultimate determination. That's exactly right. As long as we are very clear in this that there is a recommendation given. I, I, I've been on here long enough to remember when the recommendation of the, of the MET, MEDP board was not even sought before a no, termination I, was made. That's what I said in my original comment. I think that we do need to hear from this board, but I just want it clear that the council makes that decision, not the board. I'm looking down the road at some point, maybe a different contractor at the time, but we use the same contract. And the council at that time, or the commission is what it'll be, at that time says, you know what, this is no longer our, the direction we want to go. And they sit down with the CD board, they get a recommendation, and they make that decision based on their how they see things, not necessarily the way the board sees it. Then I want it very clear in this process that, that it is a recommendation and a conversation had because I do not want to repeat where no, I, I the portfolio manager wasn't talked to, the MEDP board was not talked to, and it was a decision made outside of all of those who had been had oversight or interaction with the manager. So, let me suggest the following. Um, so first of all, in this sentence, I think we're talking about termination by the county because the consultant doesn't need to get the recommendation of the board. So termination by the county will follow a recommendation of the CED board, semicolon, provided the county council slash commission shall not be required to follow such recommendation. Okay. I'm good with that. Member Cannon, does that sound reasonable? Yeah, that's reasonable. I just want to make sure that my, my only concern is would have like 27 masters. So I'm trying to really focus down to have a, a, a particular entity that I'm taking focus direction from. And it's been identified that's the CED board. And that portion of there says they still have that oversight, okay. that's still there. Because what I don't want is 
to hire somebody, bring them on, outlay dollars, and the political nature changes within a commission, but not within the CED board, and the commission overrides the CED board and terminates a contract when we're doing everything we're required to or with the direction we're giving from the CED board. Does that make sense? And that, that was, that's, that's what my concern is, because I'm going to put a tremendous amount of effort for six months, and if the CED board's happy, but for some reason somebody in the council isn't, you know, that, that would be more my concern. So as long as the contract still reads, that the CDD board will have to be, the entity needs to be involved in the recommendation for termination, then I have no issue with, with how it's written. Yeah, that's not what it'll read. It will yeah, they, actually they still need to be involved. They'll be involved, but they won't. They won't make the ultimate determination. No, I don't disagree with that. Yeah. But I guess what my concern is, is if the council comes back and they go to the CDD board, the CDD board says, no, this, this contractor is doing every single thing we've asked them to. Here are the outcomes. Uh, here are the next set of programs we have rolling in. Here's the grants we have rolling in. We need this contractor, and we want this contractor to continue because the contract is doing their job. And the board overrules the CDE board and terminates the contract. That's where I am concerned. So the contract form that's in front of us has a termination clause upon 60 days written notice without cause. And, and what I think you're suggesting is that you should only be terminated for cause following a recommendation by the the board. Or no. no, I have no issue with the with the no cause. Okay. I would like the CED board. I would like the board, the commission, to do if they're going to be a termination that the CED board agrees. The CED board agrees, then it moves forward as a termination. But what if the commission goes to the CED board and the CED board says this contract is doing everything we're um, asking them to do? We do not recommend a rec we do not recommend termination of the contractor. If you change the contract, then the board can overrule the CED board and terminate the contract. That's correct. Yeah, and that's you're, what my you're tracking is. it because if as a contractor I'm doing everything that I'm asked of by my oversight, which is the CED board, I don't think it's reasonable then to be, to be terminated for doing everything that you've been asked to by the entity that's overseeing you. That's true, except that the provision that's provided in this contract is it allows for termination without cause. Right. That, that, the CED board agrees to terminate without cause, and the contractor shouldn't have an issue. But if the contractor's doing everything... So, the 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 reason I think you can speak for yourself, yourself Member Kilmer, <laughs> but the reason I think that he's suggesting the, the the requirement, the county could ultimately make a determination. Let's say this is in not in this first contract period. Let's see that say that it's negotiated and we're we're within the first one year extension period. And we made that determination on the basis of funding that we expected to receive pursuant to another grant, but it was highly likely, and then it doesn't come through. And we look at our budget and say, he's doing a great job, but we need to terminate the deal because we lack funding. And the, if the CED board comes in and says, wait, he's doing a great job, we have to have the ability to say, it's our budget, it's within our control, we have to make this change unless we can come up with some other source of funds. I would hope that you're not treated poorly in the way that your scenario right. suggested. And, and your scenario is exactly <laughs> what my thoughts are. So could we well, add, but could we unfortunately, our history is the other scenario. And and so the concern so is you're, valid. You're I have a history concern. on people that won't be here, though. So you got a whole new form of government, a whole new group of people. So oh, I say we work on a contract it, that we can live with and that best best works for Morgan County to protect Morgan County and the new commission, and uh, not worry about what people did in the past that weren't here or won't be here. Would you be comfortable with a cause with a cause in a, a clause cause? I gotta read every once in a while. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> I mean, ultimately, um, we are confident in the service we're going to provide. 
I just want to, I'm hiring people that I want to feel like there's some comfort and security for them. And so I'm trying to create an environment where they feel that kind of contract. Um, so and that's why I'm looking for either some type of, of, of cause termination or some type of entity that provides a little bit of protection um, so that we can operate within the environment and be successful. Um, and that's really what I'm looking for. But at the end of the day, okay, the end we're confident in what we're going to deliver. So that's, that's a risk allocation and a negotiation over a contractual term. Member Kilmer's expressed his preference. Do any of the rest of you have a preference with respect to it? I guess I understand the concern on the other side because it's more than just one. It, it, having spent the last six years in economic development, there isn't anyone across the state who didn't at one point or another get their toes wet in economic development in Morgan County. We don't necessarily have a history of consistency. So I, I understand the concern. Our reputation justifies it. Member Kilmer, is your concern principally funding? Yes. So I, I'm fine if we put in there principally based, if, if we clarify it based on funding, I have that concern as well. There is a, because there is great angst over the continuation of the funding from year to year, but there's also the incentive for the contractor to, to go out, solicit, and secure that funding. My other concern would be if they do that and do all the work for it, that we don't terminate their con so terminate we reminded, without cause. We get reminded many times, many, many, many times that we cannot bind the hands of a future council. I just want to make sure we don't write a contract that becomes a dispute because somebody can say we did bind the hands of the future council. They have to have the freedom to be able to manage their budget without previous contractual obligations wherever possible. But they are already bound by other contracts that we have. Yeah. Mark Miller's is five years. I, it, are. Their hands are bound yeah. on contracts that we've already entered into or will enter into and during this meeting. And contract the same way. But we don't have to get permission from somebody else. So the statement about binding future councils principally result, resolves around their legislative discretion as opposed to their contractual commitment. Uh, and, I, and I get that. I'm just saying I want them to have the ability to, to manage their budget as much as possible. So there's a couple of ways to <coughs> pursue this. One is, I think what Mr. Ebert was originally saying is he would prefer that the county council not make a decision to terminate without a recommendation by the board to terminate. So, in other words, we would only terminate for without cause if we had the recommendation of the board. Another option is to um, have a different provision for a termination for cause and then a termination without. I mean, the longest that, I mean, if depending on the terms that the commission agrees to for a renewal, if you only do one year renewals, you're only ever going to be 12 months out on this contract whether you terminate or not terminate. So, and then the last option would be to qualify the council's commission, you know, without a recommendation of the board, they wouldn't terminate unless the termination resulted in the, uh, from the lack of available funding sources to fund the contract. There's probably other solutions as well, right? Those are three I've thought of. Okay, so if there's a deal in there, you can we can terminate within 60 days. Then what difference it make if if the funding is not there? I'm I'm just trying to grasp all the conversation, but if the funding's not there, I mean, no, no offense intended, but to me this is this is a position that that you would take knowing that there is a chance, a possibility, that there, there is going to be no funding after the end of June. I mean, if, if we don't have the funding, we've already went through our budget, we looked at stuff. If you don't have the funding, how can we continue the, to fund this? I mean, we're we going in the hole, we're taking it out of... So he's already acknowledged that because the, 
it's up for negotiation between the parties for the renewal. So, in other words, the county's not obligated to extend the term past the initial term. Past June. Correct. Okay. This is, I really only see this as, as becoming applicable in the option terms because we have the funding, we're starting the process, you're doing the work. Um, I'd just like this as clean as possible when we pass it on to the next committee. More times than not, those type of things are just, let's vote to extend it, and they extend it, and they don't take into consideration the nuances. Let's, let's just clean it up. It's one little thing, and all it's saying is that the council gets to make that determination. Yeah. But, I see it exactly the opposite, that what we're asking for is we, if the funding goes away, then it's able to be canceled. If there's a reason to let him go, there's a there's a way to, for the contract to be canceled. But with funding there and and performance there, I'll address the only other way is the only other concern we're expressing is just. It. I I respect his concern. I don't disagree with him in any way, shape, or form. I'm just making sure that the count the county is protected. And that the council has the ability to exercise their right. Well, the county is protected. You have, you can, you can do, end for lack of funding. You can end for cause. That actually, protects the county. So what? Where? Where's that provision? Yeah, that's not in there anywhere. The, which one? Either one of those. The just ability to terminate for lack of funding. That's in. The first one because it's funded with the. C so I'd be happy if, in the termination, you you put a cause or funding. I, I don't have any issue with that. Um, so, so okay. So what I would recommend, indeed. I'm off the contract. So I'd say okay. upon 60 Thank days advance written notice to the other, and I would strike unless otherwise mutually agreed upon, because this is the agreement. Okay. Then I would say termination by the county will follow a prior recommendation of the CED board, provided the county council shall not be required to follow such recommendation if funding sources are not available during any extension term. Yeah, I have no problem with that at all. Uh, I agree. That's really the heart of the issue right there. Yeah. The I think the concern is, is that, that the board is doing a lot of the work with the contractor. There needs to be an element of respect for the board and what they do and what they bring to the table, but not overstep our bounds of authority. But when it comes to if there's no money to do the job, that's, that's a given. But what we would hate is if there's money to do the job and then the, the commission at the time would decide, well, if you want to get rid of this and go a different direction and not factor in the professionalism, the hard work of the board of, of oversight of this particular contract. Hopefully our articulated people. Would you okay. read that again? I didn't have my... Sure. So I'm going to strike the last clause in the first sentence, unless otherwise mutually agreed upon. Okay. And then I'm going to say termination by the county will follow a prior recommendation of the CED board, semicolon, provided the county council slash commission shall not be required to follow such recommendation if funding sources are not available during any extension term. So, so the first, so the first, the first we've got the funding. In. Yeah, the first sentence stays in. Okay. Okay. I, I think I can, I can be good with that. Okay. Anything else? Nope. That was my last one. And Tina, does that address? Can you remind concern? me what your first it one does. was? The history. <laughs> yeah. Clear back then. I just want to remember. I don't remember either. I just. It was the. Uh, oh yeah, the expenses. Yeah, the expenses. So, one. B, Romanet 2. Oh, okay. All right. There it is. I'm going to start using that term all the time now whenever I see it. Romanet. <laughs> Don't use it at home. Yeah. <laughs> Roman numeral 1.
That's the uppercase. <laughs> okay, I've got those changes. Other members of the council have any concerns? I know our legal counsel requested, um, was concerned that the entity. I sent it to him yesterday and he, and he acknowledged it. Did you not, were you now in I on I saw that, that, but then I saw another email today that, have you just done, is Ebert Solutions an, an existing entity? So did you register it as just a res name reservation, or is it an LLC? LLC, yes, sir. So is it Ebert Solutions, comma, LLC? LLC. Is, and that's a Utah Limited Liability Company? Yes, sir. When did you file? Oh, 14 hours ago. So you don't have it back from the state? Uh, I, I, they did send me uh, a printable copy of it. They so, if you'll, is that what you yeah. sent? Yeah, I the screenshot, so you can see on there where the link is on his screenshot for the PDF version. So they have assigned it. It's just, but it takes 24 hours for it to update in the system. So I wasn't surprised it's not there yet. So if you can send me a copy of that, and if the council approves this contract, I'll wait to sign it until I have seen that. Does that work? Yes, sir. Okay. Any further di discussion? Is there a motion? I would make a motion to approve the economic development contract, the, ec the, the Morgan County Community and Economic Development Director contract agreement with Ebert Solution with the changes noted in our discussion. Okay, a motion by Member Cannon, seconded by Member Averett. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Chair, may I just say really quickly, I appreciate it. I appreciate the attention to detail. I think we actually have a much better contract now, so thank you. And I'm super excited and looking forward to working with this community, so thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. you get Appreciate to start on the efforts. next agenda item. <laughs> so, as I understood the vote, Member Kilmer, you voted yay? Actually, I didn't vote, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was busy what? trying to get my internet to come back on so I could get my pocket back open. So, I, I think the positive vote, Stacy or Member Cannon, Averett, McConnell, Kilmer, and Newton. Yeah, Sarah, Sarah ever come on? Okay, Sarah's. Okay. Sarah is probably excused for good reason. Okay. I will give her credit for calling me on her way home from the hospital. <laughs> I thought that's quite the trooper. Was, was that today? No. It was no. last week. I just just, we did I thought it contract. was supposed to have been last week. But, yeah. Okay, next item, Member Cannon. Uh, discussion decision extension of the enterprise zone tax credit okay so this is a renewal this is a lot of work to go through and designate uh, for the contract with the state of Utah so I've asked Lance to pull up the maps so it's a five-year designation if we don't finish this by the end of the year Morgan County use it, loses the ability to designate in the unincorporated areas and enterprise zone the city has done everything within their boundaries to, for this designation. The discussion, as I sent out in the email, should be over the one line over, well, if you can see in red where we've designated. If you're comfortable with everything that you can do in the enterprise zone to be only in those areas of red, then, there's, then we're good to go and we'll finish the work on it. But I want to make sure that it is the, that the council is in agreement that those are the only areas, or if you want to extend them. Some uh, of the other counties, especially Box Elder County, they have the whole county. Yeah, I would, I would shrink it, so I'm not going to vote to extend it. You would shrink the enterprise zone. Mm -hmm. 
I'm not going to ask you to. I'm just saying I'm not going to vote to extend it. Okay. If, if no one, if, my only concern is on the agricultural credits. That because the enterprise zone credits can be enhanced for agricultural activity. Do we have this information in our packet? Yeah. Well. I sent it to no, you. That's what everybody's been responding to on the masks is actually the documents on the enterprise zone. So I know you have it because it's been going back and forth and I've been looking for the comments on it. But it will come back one more time before I submit. But before I go to all of the work, I want to know what your concerns are because this is not a simple process. And economic development is taking all of my time and then some. So what, what's the area above? Looks like it's going up to the bottom of the Cottonwoods. What is all yeah, that? Yeah, so, that, so you've got the airport area. You know where that, you've got a little bit of your, um, oh, that's not where. That looks more like Trapper's Loop right there, Roland, doesn't it? That's Trapper's Loop yeah. there. And so so it's, you got it's supposed to be taking in the commercial area, the business park in Mountain Green. That's right here. So I don't know what, why the rest the of the red. And like you've got Browning in there. Is that Browning's property? Well, part of, it, part of it is Browning, but part of it is Durbano, too. Well, then let's shrink. Not because it's Durbano, that's not what I'm saying, it, but because of where it's at. Well, I mean, I didn't, I, I didn't have a problem. <laughs> I just those, wanted that on the record. Those Freudian things are killer, aren't they? Well, I didn't have a, I didn't have a problem <laughs> with, like, the commercial area, the 50, uh, you know, 5800, I think it was, or mm -hmm. Powderhorn, the airport, um, Brownings uh, in particular, um, because see, a lot of that outline is Browning's. Yeah. I, I think, sorry, I think you could have the Enterprise Zone apply to any commercially zoned areas in the county. And that's what I thought it was until we, we zoomed in, because that's not commercial. So I can firm those up and do just commercial. But that does not take into consideration anyone who's doing agricultural. And so I'm going to read it. Um, let's see. That adds value to agricultural commodities through manufacturing or processing. So I don't know, and maybe you guys know of anyone who's doing that or is planning on doing that in any of those areas that are, that are zoned agricultural that are not zoned commercial at this point. Mm. Where, where was that one at? It, that's in the That's enterprise. in job creation tax credit item number 123. So that's my concern and why I'm bringing it to you is if you have an agricultural based business that's in the agricultural zone but not in the commercial zone, they would not qualify for this unless we designate that area. So before I go through the, pro the process of identifying and, and submitting the maps, we want to make sure that anyone who is thinking about it, because this is one of the best credits that they, we have. We have multiple businesses within the county who have qualified in the last six years for this grant. And we desperate. Go ahead. Yeah? Voice from the sky. Sorry. <laughs> I think of two or three agricultural businesses that could probably mm -hmm. qualify for this if they were in the zone. When I looked at date map, I noticed that a lot of counties are including essentially their entire county. Yep. Is there any disadvantage to do? Could we just blanket the entire county and say we want this all to be part of our enterprise zone? Quite frankly, that would be so much easier for me, especially on the, on the map designation, because I have to turn in the description of the area. So that would be the easiest way for me to go on the submittal of it. The concern that I think has been expressed is that it also allows areas that you would not necessarily want to encourage. But 
I don't know that we're going to have any commercial activity. Well. But the fact that they're designated as an enterprise zone doesn't get them past what our zoning does or does not allow within an applicable zoning district. Right, but if what is Wasatch Peaks, of course, the other part of this that everyone should realize is the county writes a letter of recommendation at, on these, so there is a county participation in it. So I don't, I don't necessarily, I, I don't want to name a business specifically, but a very high end business area. So Lance, scroll back down to the right that has the um, no, back farther, back to like double slide area. Well, that's that was why I wanted you to scroll well, back you've there got, to see. You've got other, wait a minute. There's the county line. Okay. That's the county line. So you got part of, Dev, you got part of Devil Slide, you got Taggart area, you got Reese Brothers. Does it go the same way, that same way up through Porterville? And what about on Morgan Valley Drive to Richville Lane? No, none of that is. That's all. So you see, that's why I brought it back as the question. Is so go. Look, Summit County. Yeah, Summit County did everything, but they excluded certain areas, and that's easier for me to do than doing individual areas like we've done. So scroll down, zoom in on Enterprise. Right there where you are was, what's that? Oh, that's the uh, yeah, asphalt plant. That's mm -hmm. the asphalt plant. I, I don't. I wasn't aware it was available for agriculture enterprises, and so I, I don't have an objection to extending it to the agricultural properties either. Okay. I'm not, I don't understand that there is a negative effect by designating the entire county. Yeah, I'll, or I'll, designating it all with certain exceptions. If, yeah, I, I just want to make sure that I am following. So does it go, does it include up there by Snow Basin? Weber County line, mm. none of that? No, it, it ends right there below, at the bottom of Trapper's Loop. So when you say you extend, what did we, where did we extend? We haven't. We haven't, that's the question. Do you well, want That's what to. I'm saying, so. This is what's on the map right now. Yes, you are. What you're seeing is what the current designation is, and we have till December 31st to reapply and extend it for the next five years. This is the last opportunity to do it. So I can't push it off, <laughs> or I probably would, but I ha we have to move forward on on this and submit for the next five years. Part of what the state legislature was doing in doing the individual grants for rural communities was getting rid of a lot of these. But as, so they may phase this out over the next five years, but they are giving us the opportunity to make the designation and for businesses to still be able to apply with this designation. So if we go to this Utah Economic Development Map website, we can look at the rest of the state. Yeah, in fact, Lance can zoom out and you can see the whole state from where we're at. Oh, not quite that far. But. So you can see Box Elder County is completely in, Rich County is completely in. Daggett. Duchenne and you went to have been a little more strategic about it. My personal recommendation is all, so 
please don't make me figure out the maps. I think if there's no um, detrimental effect in including the entire county, we might as well just include all unincorporated county. Yeah, that would cover the whole county because the city has done everything within the city. So there are, there are two designations. The if city. you look at other counties in the state, they've done the same thing, yep. particularly like central Utah and down. Yeah. Some of the northern, you not, but. So, Mr. Chair, well, yeah. My questions to Robert: Why would you shrink it? Hmm? You said you would shrink well, it. I was against it from the start. I don't, I don't even want to have it. But I'm not going to argue it. I'm not going to even bring it up. So, it's whatever you guys want to do with it. I'm done. Okay, I'm Member done. Newton, was that a motion? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I'd like to make a motion that we include all of unincorporated Morgan County in the enterprise zone. I'll second that motion. Okay, motion by Member Newton, seconded by Member Cannon. Any questions on the motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? You know what. <laughs> Wait, it's not rolling this time, huh? Okay. Yeah. All right. Hey, Thank you. Now. Look look at him. He's becoming a conformist already. <laughs> <laughs> Agenda number three. You can back to work for the government, can't you? <laughs> Gwen Rich, discussion decision, approval of additional board of equalization adjustments. I'm here if you have any questions, for me. Yeah. Um, I have any questions for Gwen? Well, I just, I just read this official action requested. So you're requesting approval of this thing? Yes. Is that what we're saying? Okay. Okay. There's no questions. Is there a motion? Chair, I'll make a motion to approve the board, additional Board of Equalization adjustments. There's a second. second. Okay, Member Averett. Okay, a motion by Member Cannon, seconded by Member Averett. Any questions on the motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thanks, Carl. Uh, Lance Evans, continuation of a public meeting from the council meeting on October 20th, 2020. Discussion decision on the basin subdivision concept plan, a proposed 184 lot subdivision concept plan located on 52 acres at approximately 5,000 North Old Highway Road. So this is a continuation from uh, your last meeting, the applicant had, I mean, it's a proposal for it was initially 195 lots uh, building on the development agreement uh, that was approved last August. Uh, hey, Member Newton, can you just um, mute your phone for a minute? It's Mr. Uh, who is it? several concerns and questions and the applicant has uh, prepared uh, some additional information they've made some changes to the uh, concept plan reducing it to 184 lots adding snow storage areas um, and, and they've attached and included their designs for their uh, area park plan so this to address your concerns uh, I unless you have specific questions for me I think I'd like to just to turn the time over to Greg Day, who's the applicant, and um, let you let him present what he has um, prepared for you. Okay, Mr. Day, we were getting some feedback, so go ahead and come back on, and let's see if we can get that remedied. Can you guys hear me now? Yes, that's better. 
Okay, the Greg Day, 1222 Legacy Crossing Boulevard, uh, Centerville, Utah. Um, this is a continuation of our, of our concept plan, and, and we appreciate your guys' as audience today, and we're excited to kind of present some of the changes that we've made um, in response to some of the comments and the concerns that were expressed by the council at our last meeting. I'll, I'll quickly summarize them, and then um, I'm more than happy to answer any questions. Uh, relating to these. Um, I think we could probably sum them up within three items. We've added, and Matt spoke to them, but I'll speak a little bit more. We've designated specific areas on the concept plan for storage um, areas for snow. In addition, we've confirmed with Public Works that the park strips um, are adequate in a public road for that snow storage. Um, so that's in addition to the designated areas. We've also added some we added an additional park area um, to increase the recreational opportunities that was brought up it's a there'll be some pickleball courts kind of in, in the middle of the single family areas adjacent to the east west trail corridor can you please um, point out where those are because i can i need lance to either zoom in or show where those are because oh. it is not showing on the so you're talking about the open space could you go to the illustrative plan i think it better it shows it better. Hey, Greg, are your park strips five feet wide then? Um, they're county standards. Let me look at the concept plan. Six feet wide. Great, thank you. So I have it on page 20 of our thing where the... Yeah, the, the reason that I'm asking for it to be zoomed in on on the other plan is that's my overall concern is well go ahead and continue to present because and I'll hit it when we go to that point okay so uh, before we had in that pickleball area we showed some building lots we've removed those to add that uh, open space Greg, where's that? Yeah. is that right in the middle that's right in the middle that's correct and so that is now what Cal, what Cal Hyde Park was is now pickleball courts. No, previously there was no park right there. There were two building lots. Well, we removed those and added that. So where did so where did Cal Hyde Park go? Because in your original presentation for your concept plan, there's Cal Hyde Park, there's Oxbow Park, there's all of them disappeared at one point or another. So to say you've added this doesn't seem very consistent with what the overall you're putting them back in you're not adding them yeah I, I'm getting a little nitpicky yeah I, yeah well I, they're that's where they're at right there um, we've given a couple presentations and there have been some adjustments so is Oxbow Park back in or not they are the map that you see in front of you is the proposal so, and, and that includes Oxbow Park, Cowhide Cow Park, and Bullwick Park. That's correct. And a pool area. area. Swimming pool in the town home area. And so how many, so you've got Hammock Park on there. Is that the part in green or is it taking up that two, those two building lots? Uh, Hammock Park is on the right hand side it's, as you come in from Rollins Ranch. It's kind of a gathering area we've designated. So those are the five specific areas. So what is the total acreage at, at this point for common area? What's your total acreage for a common area? I'm going to the concept plan looking for that. I don't think we have it listed no, on I don't the table, do. the site summary table.
That's part of my concern is every time this has come back, the, the common area in the parks area is shrinking every single time. So if Abbott listed as a certain percentage, I, 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 don't, I don't have a lot of confidence that's coming back at a certain amount. Uh, when I increase the concept plan in size, uh, in the concept plan attached to the development agreement, I can't. It, it, you can't read it. Yeah, I can't quite get it. So, yeah. Greg, if you can, um, I don't know if you can do a quick calculation. I'm not seeing the acreages on the parks, but um, I think what Member Cannon is asking is if it meets or exceeds the amount of open space shown, shown on the concept plan attached to the development agreement. Yeah, I, let me go through the, the county submittal. I don't believe it's designated there. I'll, I don't have that number with me readily. I'd have to calculate it or have our engineer calculate it. Yeah, that'd be. Okay. Just so that we're clear on what my concern is, the reason, it, it, the reason I, I keep bringing this up is the original maps, and they were in there six times on the original maps, had all sorts of parks designated, all sorts of open space designated. But yet when it comes back for the development agreement, they're gone. And I realize that you are allowed up to, based on the, con on the development agreement, it is up to a certain amount of density. But that does not mean you're entitled to that density per se. It is up to that amount. And the overall plan should be consistent with what the recommendations were and the understanding were in the in all of the concept plans presented. So I see it going exactly the opposite way with the concerns that I've expressed than, work, than going to actually addressing the concerns. So I'm not sure I follow that, Member Cannon. I, the concept plan attached to the development agreement shows two depending on the nature of what you constitute a park there's an open space area along that eastern boundary the northern boundary and there's some wider areas so maybe i'm looking so, at something different but those aren't than your. those aren't open space those are almost a vertical wall offsetting then what parks are you referring to in the concept there, there's the point when we were looking at when i go back to the july 7th original proposal when it, and the one that was not accepted by the Planning Commission. And then I go to the November one. The parks are coming out. So instead of it having a big open space and park area, as was originally done, and I can go back through the 150 designations of it, but this one in particular, that's this is the map that was in there six different times. And there's one here, there's one here. There's a lot more open space around here. There's this area that they're now calling a tot lot all of these areas are disappearing as the actual concept going from the concept plan to the development agreement to now what is actually being built and if you go back to the open space requirements for each multifamily project with 10 units or more shall include amenities for the residents of the project because each project will be different in nature the amenities are likely to be different but the number of amenities required shall be in proportion to the proposed number of units in the development. Amenities shall be provided according to project size or comparable equivalent amenities as required or recommended by the Planning Commission and if the County Council approval is required as approved by the County Council. Amenities include, and then it goes through the list, so based on our code, for the amount of density that we're looking at, the, the amount of open space that is actually being put in here, seems to be shrinking. So we're already in an area that is overstressed for the amount of parks available for the community. We're adding a density that has never been seen in Mountain Green, let alone the, the full unincorporated county, and yet we're not addressing those open space issues in this. That's my concern. So in what you articulated, I didn't hear a specific percentage of open space required. And, and the, count, the, the count, county code does not designate a percentage. But what I am seeing is that what was in the original concept plan was 7.5 acres. And now we're down to, in the last one, 2.5. And now it's not designated at all. And so that's my concern is, okay. what is it? 
So Craig, I think I think what you're showing tonight has an increased amount of open space. I don't know if it gets to the 7.5 acres. I don't know either. Because I, I, I can't see that either. So that's a calculation that it would be nice to have. Yeah. I can produce that calculation. No, but I'll need to. That one of the things that you said to me last time is in with the single lots that the reason that you went from you did you reduced the number of single family lots is that you were making them bigger based on what I'm seeing you went how can you go from 57 single family lots which would be above the 12,000 acres down to 11 and, and then tell me that you're making those bigger that that doesn't make any sense so if you're going to add this kind of density, I would expect that we would also add the facilities and the open space for the recreation that this, this type of a community would need. So yeah, let me just kind of explain that. I would just maybe disagree. We went from, I think, uh, 13 lots on that, maybe it was 12 on that eastern side. Our latest, we showed 10 lots because we have made them bigger. Um, so we've increased the size of those. In addition to all the single family lots, we've increased them from 50 feet wide to 60 feet wide to accommodate a third car garage. So we've decreased the overall number of single family lots. But this is where I feel like it's getting lost from meeting to meeting to meeting. If I go back to the original July, where the concerns that were expressed by the council were concentrating on the commercial areas and the commercial areas alone. And I, and I made the statement then that this is higher density than we've seen. And you assured me that you would be doing, you would not be going that direction. But yet the very next iteration comes back to address the commercial property and then adds to the density in, in the single family, taking out the larger single family homes and going to the majority being, as we're seeing now, patio homes, while then again taking out the open space requirements, or the open, open space designation. And there's the, the concern, is I know that you're entitled to up to a certain number. But if you're going to go up to that certain number, then you need to also address it in the common area or the recreational opportunities for the area. And never in any map until our last meeting was that density there for the townhome area. So how we were able to even address what the amenities should be until we've actually seen a map that has the amount of townhomes in it is beyond me. Because how do I know what you need for facilities until I know what your density is going to be? in your population. The other point I think that needs to be considered in connection with parks and amenities is that we do have a park impact fee. I agree. So each of these homes will be contributing to the, the parks in our community vis-a-vis -vis the park impact fee. And, and it, it, had someone reached out to me, this is the conversation that I would have had over that. Because here's the concern. Yet every single family home in there or residential um, designation in there will pay into that impact fee. But yet where will we spend it in Mountain Green? There isn't, unless we're designated an area in there to purchase a regional park, where are you going to go in Mountain Green? There isn't anything available. I tried for two years but to that, get that done. But that's not a problem that the developer can solve. I, I agree. However, since that is not something that we can now solve with the impact fee, I do have to go back to, is it consistent with our general, uh, with our code, stating that each, each family, multifamily project with 10 units or more, which this qualifies, shall include amenities for the residents of the project. So all of this is part of that discussion. I'll be quiet. <laughs> well, then we can get rid of the tot law. Yeah, see? Because... <laughs> Put in more pickleball courts, because he's about 15 pickleball courts short. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All active adults. That's a good no start, but that's a seed only. <laughs> so if you'd like to go to my second concern here, because I don't think we're going to resolve this tonight, but I have some real concerns, and, and I don't think it should come as a surprise when I said in July. This is my ward. You can see my graveyard, my graveyard plot 
in the big picture on this. And I'm, I'm vested in what it looks like at the end, but I feel like we're going the opposite direction of where we want it to go. The road in the middle that's got patio homes with a road both in front and in back, this, if I, even if I go back to the... Um, Which road are you talking about? This one right in the middle. I mean, if I see how it's got... Yeah, so you've got your two inside roads. The main road? Yeah, you've got your main road and you've got a row of patio homes and then you've got a road behind it. I don't know how that, how do you oh. clean snow off of a sidewalk in your backyard? So that second public street has moved between the last iteration and this iteration to where every single person who lives there will then have to take their snowblower around to the back to clear the snow off oh, of the front. I see where before yeah, the it, road had, was it not had there. lots back to back. Exactly. Coming off of that main road. I I agree with that. So it didn't get better. The concern was expressed over how do you get rid of snow up here, and instead of it getting better, it got worse. Well, but this has been and I'm not I'm not arguing I'm not disagreeing with what you're bringing up. Um, because it falls into line with some of my concerns, but the problem we we need to remember is is concept plan. It's just that it does not guarantee them the them or the county anything. I, and I that's, agree. And that's where we're running into problems. Is they presented a concept plan, and we said okay. Well, now they've changed mm -hmm. and their it's whole not, configuration. Yeah, and now it's not going. That's. So my point in this is, this is going the wrong direction from where I would expect it to go. The connectivity standards, if you zoom back out, Lance. So now, on a connectivity issue, if you're looking at, it, at your roads, see the, the second public street we were just talking about. Now, instead of having that second entrance and access be something that flows through and is actually a connector to take the stress off of the main road to the school, now you've dead-ended it there's really no, this is not going to collect anything there, and you don't have a connectivity plan. Which road are we talking about? Is this the school? Is this the school? So the requirement, is that where the school sits? Yes, ma'am. So the requirement based on our code is to have two accesses, and you've got them. In the last plan they brought forward, this one continued and fed, and then there's, then there's another circle up here. But it was a collector. Now, right, the way this is situated now, the majority of anyone going in and out is going to use this main road. Why would you ever come in here if you have to then come back around this way? Anyone leaving up here is now going to go down here and not use this anyway. So if you've got a fire, everybody's going here. Nobody's going here. But I'm getting nitpicky now. But I think... I think some of the issue, and this is my personal opinion, and that's because the council allowed it. If if they can't do the commercial, we've allowed them the ability to turn those into residential lots. I personally think that's what they're going to end up being in. That's why I voted against it before. This accommodates more residential lots than what he had presented the first time. But none of this, they've left the commercial out of this. This is just what they're entitled that. to residentially. They've yeah, they've left it out for now. But what the concern is, if over time this is going to be a... I'm, I'm, I'm not going to finish that sentence because I know I can't require it until it's actually code. But... This is a community that is going to consist of every single development that goes in, whether it's Rollins Ranch, whether it's Warner's, whether it is CW land. At one point in time, we will be a community. The roads should connect. I've sat on how many, how many committees now where we're paying to go in and reconnect communities in Salt Lake and Davis and Weber County because these kind of plans went forward. Mm -hmm. 
been here on one of those roads. I can't. Yeah. There's no. It's probably pretty. You still have hope, though. One way in, one way out. I agree. Someday they may build that. So that's where people have to die first. They can leave it just the same as sitting out in the yard. They're not going to get there as well. I'm fine with my cows at the end of the road. Yeah, that's a dead end road. It's great. It's short sighted. But if you go, if, if we go to the the seventh July packet, like you're talking, mm -hmm. there's two different drawings in there. Yes, but what is the drawing that is used most often, Roland? What's that? What's the drawing that's used most often? There's a reason why it's used most often. Well, and I no, I understand that, and that's where part of the yeah part of the problem is is all this has been concept. That's why I was trying to go back here real quick. So all I, I expressed these concerns. I was told that it would go the one direction. It's now going the other. I'm really, has, have I made it clear I'm not happy with the direction it's going? Because that's all. Where did this go? I was curious, do you like this plan? <laughs> I'm not I sure if you like it or not. I know. And this is me not on caffeine. So. Believe it or not, I'm holding back. I'm not going to lie. I like the hammock park. Yeah, I'd like several more hammock parks. Okay, well, I'm not sure where you're going with all this. My a couple of issues I've got with it is on the one concept plan, it shows an eight-foot walking trail that goes from Rollins Ranch clear across. Um, I don't know how many of you have had a chance to go look at the wonderful walking trail that goes up through the Cottonwoods. It's falling apart. The county is responsible to fix it. If we're going to put a walking trail down through there, I want it concrete. I don't want any asphalt that the county has to maintain down through there. Um, the the townhomes, the way that's got in the in the uh, packet, the way it shows the townhomes, I just want clarification. Um, let me go back to. On the one on the one draft of the development agreement, let's see if it shows it. No, no it don't show it. But it, it shows the townhomes that the property line that the townhomes go right to the property line. But if you go to your exhibits in in the November nineteenth, July seventh, it shows the townhomes are connected. Is that your intent that those Townhomes are connected and not single townhomes sitting on property lines. So they will be a series of connected townhomes, if I'm understanding that correct. So they'll be they like they will have a, a common wall. So they'll be like four townhomes connected together. That's correct. Four, five. Looks to me like it's more like ten or twelve. Yeah, there could be some. There's, I think we show some six plexes. Six most. fives. Yeah, they're huge. Okay, well, I just wanted to to clarify because in the one uh, exhibit that you have, it just shows that the townhome is sitting on the property line. I assumed that they were connected. I just wanted to clarify. And then the other one was, I'm still against that public road going down through the middle of all those duplexes. No, oh, you've got it private the, straight now. Um, Commissioner Haslam, is that the one that goes around the townhomes, not in the center triangle, but rather around it? Yes, sir. Public street? Yes. 
I have a problem with the public streets up through the houses. I just have an issue with public streets down through the middle of all those townhomes. Okay, let me, let me just comment to these two, uh, dear Mr. Haslam. I, I don't think we have, a, we can do a, the eight foot trail in concrete. I think that's fine. I've noted that. Um, in addition to, if that needs to be a public street in those town, or excuse me, a private street, if that would make the county council feel better, I think we'd be willing to do that in that area. We'll have a sub-association there that can handle those increased costs of maintenance. So I think that would be fine. Mark those down as sold. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So I just was noting in your cover letter, you indicated that the, in addition to the trails, there will be five, oh, I'm sorry, I misread it. It's just five areas. So I think to address member Cannon's concern, we're gonna to need to get a calculation of the amount of open space. Okay. And then the, what is your proposal? Um, I think it's, a, where you've got those single family lots that are um, fronting essentially on two streets. Yeah. Roland, I didn't think that was allowed. Yeah. Roland. So they what? will front on the eastern street. Is that even allowed? Um, there's some other areas in other communities. What we did not want to do is put a bunch of driveways coming onto that spine road. Um, oh, double frontage? We want to cut into the asphalt and create sort of a problematic area that way, but then having that number of driveways, um, specifically where they're, you know, it's a, it's a pedestrian path to the school, we wanted to try to minimize that. All right, where did my stuff So go? what the concern is, is snow removal on the sidewalks at the rear of the lots then. Is that your school zone? That's, that's your access to your school. You have the same issue. And you know how many kids are gonna go through there now? Five and six plexes on the other side of the street too. You're talking about that open space there? Yeah, although, although I think with those, the same association that would maintain the private street would be maintaining those sidewalks, but... But not on that side. But not on the single family lot side. Yeah. No, I mean, and I don't know what Tina's pointing out, but on 5000 West Street, they would have to do that sidewalk? Not on the side, on one side, but on not the other. On the west other. side of that road? Yeah. I think I think if you have a an HOA that's maintaining that kind of common area that that's their property that's adjoining the public right of way. So from my perspective, under the so code, they would have to maintain it. Lots that we're concerned about. Yeah, the individual lots would have the same obligation, I think, but it's very difficult to do. Um, I, I mean, not so much for the end lots; they can just work their way around the corner. No, I meant about homeowners association. Would they be the ones doing? Too. Well, that I mean, I think I think you're going to have a sub association for the townhomes. Maybe not, but that's the way I would think it would be. So the townhomes would have their own sub association and maintain that area. And Greg mentioned that there would be a sub association that would maintain that street. So that's why I think it's a sub association. Maintain which street? The the streets that you don't want to be public, and he agreed could be private. Oh, okay. Well, so then coming back to, to one of Member Cannon's issues, if you zoom out a little bit, Lance. So, so on your on the map that's on the, in the seventh of July. What? I, I just am a little concerned about going back to the July stuff when we oh. the development agreement in August. Uh, no, okay. no, no, that's not my question. But that's my exactly the point, is. Lance. That's exactly the point. And that would have been the point that I'm just... No, it, it changes. The development agreement in August. Yeah, and the, de and the very... At, and in that minute. development... Go the, ahead. The point would be to just bring up an mm -hmm. issue or a concern that you have with this concept plan that you'd like to have addressed. My concern with this concept plan that I would like to have addressed is that it does not provide a better route to schools as indicated in 8-5C-7B connectivity standards, where it is reducing impacts of development on master planned arterial and collector roads by providing alternative routes. My concern on this, on this concept plan is it does not address 8-5C-7IBB-6, 
Each multi-level, multi-family project with 10 units or more shall include amenities for the residents of the project because each project will be different in nature. Amenities are likely to be different. It doesn't address my issue with open, day, open space corridor preservation in 8-5-C-7BI. It doesn't hit any of those. Is that good enough? I was talking about that. So Lance, my, so my question is, so on, remember I asked you about the development agreement and you sent them to me? Yeah. So, so you sent them to me on the 26th. You sent me the Basin View Development Agreement exhibits. Okay, so if you, if you pull that up. So you're reading from it's, the approved development agreement. Yeah, it's, Great. okay, it's nothing like this. It's back like what's in July is what I'm exactly. saying. Exactly. It, sa it says in the development agreement that, sorry, Roland, can I add to your no, you're concerns? Right. Um, in the development agreement, it says, based on the concept plan, which will govern density, development, and use of property, Exhibit B. You go back and find Exhibit B for me, Lance, because Exhibit B doesn't exist anymore. So if you go back and find what used to be Exhibit B, that's the point. The map changes multiple times, but Exhibit B is not in your August minutes, it disappears by the time we go from July where the discussion is commercial to the time we go, go to an actual development agreement, the map is no longer there. So how do we know what we discussed and what was agreed to? Because the only thing that I can find then is the whole exhibit F that goes back to this map. See, and I have, I have to concur with Member Cannon because I traced them back the 19th of November, the 7th of July. And the 21st of July. Yeah, I've got four of them open. And we're, and none of them are we've changed. But so what, what, what the other issue I've got is, is part of her deal on the collector. The way it's designed right now and presented, everybody's going to go out the collector that goes to the school. Um, you know, I want to try and take all of them, the majority of them houses, down through next to the Warners and take some of the pressure off that main road going up towards the school. Can I see if I can correct all of your thoughts? Issues of open space calculation, snow removal on the rear lots, public streets in the town home area, and then these for the project and the flood drop this to a fire. Not everything. And does it uh, present the acreage for open space and where, and where they're at, yeah. That was my concern in going back through it all, Lance, is... And, and I think those are legit concerns, and I just didn't want, I wanted to reference them as concerns as per the development agreement we have approved, and you want that additional detail that you're... And, and that's yeah. where we should be. And, that, and that is the point. In D, Exhibit B does not exist in any of our documents, and it changes time and time and time again. And if that is what they get to use, then it ought to be in the documents with a very clear designation of Exhibit B so we know what we're going through. Because until they came forward, there was never a time where there was a map for Exhibit B where there were ta the townhome density was shown at all, at all. Where does it reference Exhibit B, Member Cannon? I don't. It is in. In the development agreement. Yeah, the development agreement, recitals, D. But that's the one in July. So you have to go. It's it's not in that same spot in, but it always references B. But yet B does not exist. So in the three iterations of it that I have. Oh, concept plan. Yeah. So this is the concept. Plan. That can't be the concept plan. That's what you had on, in July. That was what was on the staff report was that map. And then that map is consistent so all the way through two. Exhibit F, but B doesn't exist. I'll have to go back and check the record. I, I... Yeah, it never does it ever change from Exhibit F. B never exists. So I have concerns expressed by the council are issues of open space calculations, 
not removal on the rear lots, public streets in the town hall area, amenities for the project, the collector route to the school, and the development agreement referencing an exhibit B. Just a second. Did you get the uh, trails being concrete? <laughs> <laughs> Concrete. He agreed to that, so you just put it in there. Well, nothing yet. <laughs> no, Tina made a motion to approve it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, for my right there. Phone, bring it back when I'm not here because I remember. Alright, what's his name? Greg. Greg. Well hang on a minute, Greg. Okay. Greg. Well, I thought. seen that in the November in the November packet. I guess it's not. I was thinking it was in the 19th November one, but it's not there. Nowhere close. Okay, you can continue, Member McConnell. I'm not okay. It. So there's been some concerns raised. Is there a motion that somebody wants to make? Great. Have you understood the concerns? I think I've got some of them, but if, if, um, if it's possible, I'd like to make sure I got them correct. Okay. Um, we've had a lot of feedback on this plan, and we're trying to accommodate everyone's feedback. Um, I want to make it very clear that we're, we're trying our best to accommodate everybody, and you know, sometimes the plan changes based upon the feedback, and so um, we're yeah, we're very much community oriented in trying to accommodate that. Really? So um, let me, if, if someone could. Tell me the list of items so I can come back prepared. I don't know if that was a member who has them that had the list, or maybe so, you have it. So, Stacy, can you repeat those, please? So, the can you can you hear Stacy? Yes, I can. Okay, great. So, the concerns expressed by the council are the issues of open space calculation, snow removal on the rear of the lots. That's that's but particular that's to 500 watts. 5,000. Well, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. I guess, yeah, along that street. Yeah. <laughs> the public streets in the townhome area. Amenities for the project. The collector route to the school. The development agreement referencing the Exhibit B. And the trails being concrete, not asphalt. Regarding the collector road going to the school, can you remind me again what the question was on that? That's the second one. It's the one. It, it's becoming the only collector road based on the other the dead end of the at the other access. It's not designed to where the other road, which is your secondary access, can take any of the traffic off of it. Okay. 
So, for example, if we continue that other public road uh, um, to where it's actually a collector from any of the others, the uh, any of the development, and then exiting onto Old Highway. That right now to encourage, to encourage more than a single family to utilize that road. That that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, ultimately, I think if you can um, have it connect to the upper, the public street on the, the far east side, um, that would be best. So I have eight foot trail, I have it uh, being concrete, the public private road in the town home area, um, open space calculations, um, the removal of the snow on the back of those lots on the collector road. Amenities, and then the uh, second collector road. So is that correct, and then Stacey? That's that is the list, but I want you to, to understand my my concern on the amenities is that you have a high density development here, without without any recognition of where the where the recreation facilities are. Typically, when someone buys into a townhome development like what you're creating here, they are looking for the amenities. There is no designation of any of those, what they are, how they will accommodate right now. From what I can see, the bathrooms are bigger than the pool. So that's not a clear designation to me that gives me any comfort. Now, the reason it doesn't give me any comfort is every single time this comes back, the density moves higher and higher, and yet those common areas get less and less defined. The parks get less and less defined. That's my concern. So I hope it's articulated correctly. I, I would just say that we've actually come down in density each time. Mm. We started two, three, four, as we've accommodated these things. Now we're we're down to 184. You're you're no, I, I, these in the town home is well taken. We can increase the amount of information, and we can look into those a little bit. So, more. so let's just clarify that because this is what's this is what's really upsetting me about this. There it is. Is exhibit B. Yeah. Exhibit B is in the twenty-one July packet. Yeah, but that's the one they tell us we can't use. Roland is July. So if you want to go back to July, there's B. So go ahead and finish your point. In all of the times that this has come forward, we've, we've had this discussion multiple times. The, the first discussion in July concentrated on, on the commercial property. And yet, overall, and then Robert and Roland led the discussion on the density issues. I, I can go back and listen to the minutes. But each and every time that we've discussed it, until our last meeting, there was not any type of a map that indicated exactly what the townhome configuration would be. And yet, at that very same time that, that we're transitioning to now we get to know how many, what the density is in the townhomes, the open space is disappearing. So I feel like this is going the absolute wrong direction from what you've assured me from July on. Because I was the deciding freaking vote on this. And then the, the other one, Greg, was the that road going up around through the uh, the condos would be private too. That's on there. That one's on there. Okay, I missed that one. I, I noted that. Okay. Okay, Greg, if you have the the concerns, then. I'm ready for a motion. Chair, I'll make a motion to postpone this and give the applicant time to address the concerns from the council. I'll second. To be brought back at his leisure. I am not on I'll second. Okay, a motion by Member Kilmer, seconded by Member Averett to postpone um, so that the applicant can address the concerns identified by the council um, to be put back on the agenda when at the applicant's request yep. any questions on the motion all in favor aye, aye. aye. any opposed okay thank you Greg
Thank you, guys. Okay, next item, uh, continuation of a public meeting from the Planning Commission on October 22nd, 2020. Discussion, decision, Baker Subdivision Plat Amendment Number 1. A proposed amendment to the Baker Subdivision moving the lot lane for Lot 1 and adding a third lot located at 725 North Morgan Valley Drive. Oh, sorry, Roland. This is a, currently a two-lot subdivision. They are adding a third lot to the north end. It's off Morgan Valley Drive. Actually, uh, sorry, he spent so much time. Huh? She had it right on there. Oh. <laughs> the, the zoning is R1 along Morgan Valley Drive. It's just a touch of A20 in one of the parcels. Uh, the original plot was just two lots, and they're reconfiguring that so that it shows um, you have original lot one and lot two of the original plot is going to shrink a little bit, still meets R1 standards, and then they add a third lot and an additional property uh, <coughs> to the north. It's actually to the north, uh, contrary to this picture. I was going to say that looks backwards to me. Yeah, yeah it, it switched on us. So the, the north is to the uh, left hand side of the page there. Um, there are some slope issues, but there's enough area here for development and, and for that lot to be developed on. Uh, the applicant has met the requirements for the uh, application, and uh, the Planning Commission recommended approval. And is there any questions for staff? You got all the frontage, everything they need? Yes. What are the intervals on that? The intervals on the, like the great, yeah, the contouring. The the darker lines are those five foot. I'm just, I'm just kind of wondering. Do you know what the if slope you scroll, is? Scroll out the middle squares are your numbers, Lance. You go right up there from your arrow, right there. Scroll out on those. I tried, but they just get real blurry on mine. Um. I can take this back for a second. Yeah, I'm real blurry. Dark lines are ten foot intervals. Okay. Any questions? Further questions for staff? Or I don't know if the applicant's here. The yeah, applicant is here. Any questions for the applicant? Well, so, <laughs> yeah, I guess. So, we did have a discussion, the applicant and I, um, and what I told him I was going to do, and it's coming from a designer standpoint as far as the septic systems go, um, the point where the, it shows his uh, PERC test for his septic system is really narrow. Um, we end up talking with the health department. Um, what they recommended is that uh, he take this down, make sure that it will meet the requirements for their septic system. And so what my thought was um, is what, what I'm looking to do is making a motion to approve with the condition that uh, he gets approval from the health department for his septic systems. Um, I don't think we could do that. Can we do that? So, I mean, because I, what I don't want to do is is have, a, have him go down, get it recorded, possibly sell it, um, have the new homeowner go down, and the health department come back and say there's not any way you can get a septic system in this in this area 
Um, okay. I'm not opposed to that. I just didn't know we is that can we do that because when we talked about that in frontier estates it, over the concerns that have been expressed over septic at that for that development we were told that we couldn't do that we couldn't address that so that doesn't seem to be consistent to me i just need to be clear that we can roland i just want consistency well i'm not so this is a plat amendment. Yeah, so what does the code require with respect to sewer? Well, we have to have Weber Morgan Health Department sign off on the septic system. Be sign. Correct. Before the, but before at this point of the process? Well, this is a plat amendment, so it's the preliminary and final plat all in one. Okay, so it is final all in one. It's final all, right. all in one. Sorry, that's so just they actually have that. So the Weber Morgan Health Department has looked at it and. I'm trying to find it in the staff report, but... No, we talked to him this afternoon. You talked to... Summer. And she has not approved it? No, they've approved, they've approved the PERT test, the soils for the PERT test, but in order to get a building permit, you have to show that you can get a well, your building envelope, as well as a primary and alternate septic system. I mean, so if you want, if you want to prove it, that's that's fine. But well, they have existing. Yeah, my understanding is that they have an existing well uh, in the adjacent lots, and so that satisfies that code requirement that they do have wet water in the subdivision. So that box is checked. They still have the responsibility to go get it before they get a building permit, but it's possible. Septic is in the same thing, that there's an area there for the septic and where it would be allowed and it, and it does pass the percolation. So they should be able to get that as well. Well, but that was our discussion. If there's enough area to show primary and alternate. And I think that's a little bit close on this one. There, so. But I believe the leader market told us that they were okay with it. Well, so then it comes back to the applicant. If you want to continue that direction, or I'll make a motion to approve it. I don't care. Well, either way, I'm not going to uh, sell a building lot to somebody and find out that they can't build on it because it doesn't have enough area. So we'll go through the process. You go ahead and prove it. I'm, just not, gonna, you know, I'm not the kind of person that's going to pull the wool over somebody's eyes and tell them they can build a home there when they really can't. So we'll have to go through the process. So it we seems to me. Signatures on the class before we record. Have their approval. So it seems to me we could have approve it subject to Lance's confirmation as to what the health department's approval entails. Because if I'm understanding this discussion correctly, Lance believes he's got the. That they've already received the approval from the health department, but Roland is concerned that that approval didn't include an evaluation of whether there was sufficient area to have both the primary and well, yeah, I don't, septic system. I don't want to get this. I don't want this to get clear to Lance and collecting signatures, and the health department come in and say, "Sorry, but we haven't looked at this and we're not approving it because they've yeah. done that before." Yeah. So I have a letter. So that's my concern. May 1, 2020, okay. Weaver Morgan Health Department stated an evaluation of the site. Okay. And soils at the above reference address was complete, completed by staff of this office. Uh, the exploration pit is located in an enclosed plat development during the site evaluation, along with the assigned numerical code for each exploration pit. The soil horizons required percolation depths and actual and anticipated maximum groundwater tables have been logged as follows. More information. Um, there. Con That's not a very good letter here. Well, I've seen there's. Conduct the required percolation test so that the bottom of the percolation test hole is 60 inches from the original grade. 
Okay, and see now we subsequently talked to them and said this letter doesn't help us very much. Could you clarify that this is approved or not? And summer. Okay, so the plus. so the next the next step after that letter is to do the perk test and get what's called the letter of feasibility, which he has. He has a letter of feasibility. Okay. But still, in order for him to get a building permit, he has to he has to have to, he has to show the well and the design will fit on the lot. Okay. And so what my concern was we approve it and it gets to the signing and the health department comes up and says, sorry, you can't fit a septic system on here. But they've already, I was told that this letter is saying that it's going to work and they just have to do a little more work to verify that the PERC test works. Okay, well, the PERC test works. So my understanding from the Morgan Health Department is that they are okay with this lot and that it's built. They, they don't see any okay. big issues with giving a septic system uh, approval. Do you there, want there, there are still elements that maybe need to be addressed, but do you want to include a note on the face of the plat that advises people as to the additional requirement? No, I'm good. Let's go. Make a motion to approve this, dude. Let's go. I was waiting All for ready? you to make the motion. Oh, I make a motion to approve the Baker Subdivision Plat Amendment application. 20.042 located at 725 North Morgan Valley Drive based on the finding conditions listed in the staff report for 10 November of 2020. Second. Motion by member Haslam, seconded by member Kilmer for approval. Any questions on the motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, discussion, decision, approval of resolution of appointment of a Morgan County representative and an alternative representative for the Utah County's indemnity pool annual membership meeting. So the meeting that was originally scheduled for the 19th of November in conjunction with ULAP has been canceled because of, based on the governor's mandate. I thought, so is ULAP canceled too? Do you ULAP know? is not canceled. This meeting has been canceled. It will be scheduled either December 3rd or 4th, 10th or 11th, 17th or 18th. Did they just barely send an email? What was that? Did they just barely send the e an email saying that? No. Yeah, UAC just barely sent an email saying it's canceled. Oh, UAC is canceled? The, the in person has been canceled. They're doing online only. They just sent an email at the beginning of our meeting tonight. Okay. Oh. So this meeting, in particular, Yay, the one that good. you need to adopt a resolution for, will be scheduled either December 3rd or 4th, 10th or 11th, 17th or 18th. It's a Thursday, Friday. It will most likely be held in Salt Lake County, and instead of a dinner, it will be a luncheon, maybe. But it does have to be held before the end of the year, and if the mandate doesn't change, it will be held online. But you do have to... Um, by resolution, appoint a representative and an alternative, an alternate representative. Well, in, in the past, it's been the chair and the vice chair, because okay. I went last year. So your resolution will be 2020-CR-20-06. Wait a minute. I thought this is the one that the sheriff was the representative on. The sheriff's there, too. Oh, he's an additional representative? Mm -hmm. okay. So there's three? So is that a motion, member? New, member, who are sure. you? Member has one. <laughs> Make a motion that the chair be assigned to the indemnity pool meeting and the vice chair be the alternate. And what's the resolution number again, Stacy? Twenty twenty dash cr dash twenty dash oh six dash twenty dash oh six. With resolution twenty twenty dash cr dash twenty dash oh six. Nice to them. They pay for a TV tower. <laughs> okay. Uh, motion by member Haslam, seconded by member Averett to appoint the chair and vice chair as the alternate or as the representative and alternate respectively. Any questions on the motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed?
All right, item number seven, County Council discussion, decision, approval of independent contractor agreement for clerical and general administrative duties associated to the Morgan County Justice Court. Um, does someone Close it. have this specifically? This is the agreement um, that provides for a clerk for the Justice Court. Is this? Oh, yeah. Is that the amount we approved? I was thinking it was different than that. No, that's that. Was I'd read through it. Well, it said twelve fifty on there. That's yeah, per month. I was thinking it was different. Yeah, it's twelve fifty per month. Yeah, that. I thought that's what we. Yeah. I might have an independent and another it's, discussion about money. <coughs> We've had a few of those. Go ahead. You lead. No, I don't want to have one. I just wanted to clarify that was the amount we agreed on. No, then make motion. Let's go. You're wasting time. It doesn't have a... They tell me how to do it. <laughs> Any other questions on the contract? <laughs> hmm. All right, I'll try. Hey, I beat up the last contract. I'm leaving this one alone. Yeah, I know. Hmm. Let's see. Yeah. So, Senator. Chair, I'll make a motion to approve the Utah Independent Contractor Agreement between Christina Arbogast and Morgan County for clerical and ad general administrative duties for the Morgan County Justice Court. Okay, there's a motion for approval by Member Cannon, seconded by Member Averett. Any questions on the motion? All in favor? Oh, wait. All right. Hold Next. on. There's a question on the motion. <laughs> well, no. So, Member Cannon, are we okay to uh, add what's that it's in our November 10th Planning Commission packet? County Council, Council packet. County Council November packet. November 10th? The form of which is in today's packet yeah. is what it is. Yes. Okay. I'm that is a friendly motion. Okay. Uh, with that amendment, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that thank you. would disagree with the friendly motion. County Council discussion, decision, approval of interlocal agreement for the provision of human resources services between Weber County and Morgan County. Well, you were saving it. Any questions on the contract or concerns on the contract? I think this is the same one we've had. No, this is no. This is a new agreement. This is the replacement of Penny. Oh no, no, it's not quite how I meant to come across. But this is the human resource contract with Weber County an interlocal agreement with Weber County to to provide human resource services. So where did we decide on a cost on this? Right. On page 66. Sorry, yeah. 65. Free compensation. Maybe I scroll on far. which one? Yes. $1,500 $1, $1, per month with a 2% increase starting January 1st, oh, okay. 2022. Any other questions on the contract? No. Is there a motion? Tara, I'd make a motion to approve the <coughs> interlocal agreement for the provision of human resource services between Weber County and Morgan County, effective November, on the later of November 17th, or the date in which this, do you want the effective date in there? It's, it's already on there. Um, yeah. Effect, to take effect November 17th, 2020. In the form attached to the packet? Yeah, in the format attached to the packet. Is there a second? I'll second. 
Motion by Member Cannon, seconded by Member Averett to approve the interlocal agreement. Any questions on the motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, next item is mine. This relates to CARES Act funding and its ratification of the MOU with Beehive Broadband. Um, a copy of that um, was circulated to the County Council and we moved forward with respect to it due to the timing issues. So we're just looking for ratification of that. We do have um, a signed version of it back from Beehive as well. And Cameron's here to update on progress if you're interested in that. Go ahead and give them an update and then. Great, uh, thank you for inviting me to come back again tonight. It's nice to see you. I'm glad you're all well. Um, just uh, by way of an update, uh, We've had a small crew working in the Highlands for the past two weeks. They're doing some prep work. Um, we're removing some of the old coax cable uh, where it's possible. In the business, we call that a wreck out. Um, the, what's remaining is the poles and what we call the strand. So when you, when you look at um, lines strung between poles, you, you see a black cable. But what you don't see is that there is a, a wire uh, steel cable that supports the actual fiber or the coax up there. And so the strand is what remains, and the cables latch to that. So we're removing the old coax, uh, putting the new strand on the line, uh, as per uh, you know, the agreement with Rocky Mountain Power, and, uh, and lashing that new line. So we've been, we've been prepping for two weeks. Um, the materials are arriving this week at our yard in Lake Point. Uh, tree trimming starts tomorrow. Uh, by the end of the week, we'll probably have three to four crews in the area working. Um, if you see somebody in a beehive truck who's kind of supervising, his name's Corey, say hello. Um, so we, uh, yeah, anyway, I mean, that's, that's the basic update, um, uh, Chairman McConnell. So things okay. are moving ahead. I'm looking forward to the ratification tonight. Uh, the timetable, we still believe that we can meet the timetable, and we're just moving, moving ahead quickly. Great. So, thank you. Thank you. So I just have one question, Mr. Chair. Okay. So on page one, um, this is based on 533 homes of businesses, additional cost for delivering services is approximately $799,500. Um, that's not the count, county, that's... Well, that's what I want to, that's what I want to clarify is that the total cost, is that something the county's got to come up with? I just want to clarify in this paragraph that this is not something the county has to pay up. Uh, yeah, that is correct. That is the portion that Beehive will share with the residents. Uh, and if you go over on to page two, it describes that we will be asking residents for a $300 uh, fee, install fee, as well as a 12-month agreement. Okay, well, I get, I get all that. Yeah. I'm just saying on this bottom part, it doesn't really specify that this is something the Beehive is going to incur as opposed to Morgan County. Yeah, I, I, uh, you, you, I think you understand it, uh, or it, hopefully you understand it correctly, but you're right. Maybe it could be read that way. Um, let's see. Right. I mean, would you like... Uh, uh, Chairman McConnell to make a correction and we can initial it tonight or? Well, I would. Uh, we can add, I mean, if we were going to do something like that, we could, th this additional cost is paid for by Beehive and its customers. Yes, yes that's right. Yeah. Okay, do you have the hard copy with you? I, I have a hard copy here. Uh, I have an electronic copy on my laptop. Does the hard copy have my prior one? It does. Do you want me to just? Yep, that would be just fine. Do you need to amend that, that or do you, in the motion, just clarify that paragraph, cost identified in, in paragraph one, two, three, four, five, are to be borne by Beehive Broadband and the customer. I'm I'm comfortable doing it either way. I don't care either. I, it's up to Roland. I think we're comfortable with it either way. Okay. 
Okay. No, oh, you can you add it to the clamp. Write it in and whatever, just write it in like that. I'm good. Well, it's a good thing you said you was going to be using those cables because I was going to take your guide wires out of my yard. <laughs> yeah, thanks for not doing that. <laughs> yeah. thanks you got for cable TV down here, Rose? No, don't work. Okay, so, so had it originally I've yeah. done that, so we'll include it in the motion as well. And then um, I'll have Stacy make a copy and send this to sure. both of us. Does that work? That would be fine. Would you like me to? Yeah, why don't you go ahead and initial. That uh, change we don't to have to go back and forth again. So do so. we still need a motion? We do still need a motion. Okay, Chair, I'd make a motion that we ratify thank you. Yeah, thank you. the memo of understanding with Beehive Broadband <coughs> with the clarification in paragraph 5 on page 1 reflecting the additional cost to be paid by Beehive and the customer. Okay, motion to approve or ratify by Member Cannon, seconded by Member Averett with the uh, um, adjustment suggested by Member Haslam. Any questions on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Nay. What? I couldn't vote against it before and then vote for it now. Yeah, he's been made the whole time. It was expected. Why did okay. we put this in there then? Oh my God, Gerlin. Thank you. I, I believe, I, I don't know if the, is his invoice in this stuff. Yes, <laughs> So I'll sign the invoice so you should be able to get a check. And then his only other concern was the last payment will be, oh will we be able to cut a check for the last payment in that last week of December? Okay. Great. Yeah, Thank it's you. Just, the timing's so close on this, and we don't want to miss that deadline at the end of the year for uh, invoice and payment. I think you had us have something completed in order for her to do that. Well, of course. I think she's just going to keep an eye on it. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Member Newton, discussion, decision, approval of updated historical society bylaws. Okay. Perfect. So the historical society uh, board of trustees reviewed their bylaws and made some minor adjustments. Actually, the substantive adjustments are all page six and seven, which is adding the ability to join their meetings electronically. Um, that's really the major changes to the bylaws. I guess that's an important capacity these days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is at this right now, yeah. All right, make a motion. Let's go. <laughs> okay, so I'll make a motion that we approve the historical bylaws, historical society bylaws as amended and listed in our packet. Do you want a second, second. member has them? Okay. Better do something, Randy, and then go here ready to hit me. Okay, a motion to approve the bylaws by member Newton, seconded by member Haslam. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Member Newton, reapproval of okay. consultant contract for reconnaissance level. This is Silver or survey? Uh, <laughs> you, you probably remember, you already saw this a month or so ago. This was for, a, we're using some grant funding to hire a consultant to do some surveying of historical structures in the county. When we had that discussion, there's a section in here that talks about the area being Morgan City. And when we had the discussion, we said, oh, we think that's an error. It probably should be Morgan County. And so in our motion, we made an amendment to have that adjusted. After the fact, we went back to the Historical Society and discussed it. And it should, in fact, say Morgan City. It is within the Morgan City limits that they're going to do that survey. Um, and at first, I questioned that. And then after having a little discussion with the Historical Society, they pointed out that we've done similar type surveys in other portions of the county, Morgan City just happens to be the geographical area that they're doing this particular survey. So, so that being said, rather than just having the chair approve it and sign it, I want to bring it back because we have made that adjustment. 
clarification. The last I wanted to make sure everybody was okay with it. So if it's within the city, should the, is the city providing any of the funding for it? Or are we just on the whole well, county? It's all grant funding um, that's going direct to the historical society. Um, okay. and, and the truth is, I don't know that it really benefits the city in any way. It doesn't really benefit the county either, other than it allows the historical society to identify um, potential historical structures that they can then um, work with, with landowners on trying to preserve should they choose to do that. Okay. Yeah, I'm good with this. Then I'm, do you want to? Is there a motion? Yeah, I would make a motion to approve the consulting contract between Morgan County and Storiograph. Did I get that right? For a reconnaissance level survey of approximately 542 buildings in Morgan City. I'll second that motion. Okay, a motion by Member Cannon uh, to approve, seconded by Member Newton. Uh, the reconnaissance level survey contract with the Historical Society. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, Member Haslam, discussion decision proposal from Wasatch Civil for Deep Creek Road dedications funds to come out of the corridor preservation fund. So this is one of the roads that we talked about pursuing to take over as far as the county goes. Um, this is Wasatch Civil's proposal to do the map. They'll uh, what the deal is is they're they're going to they're going to survey two feet past the existing asphalt, and that's what we would put dedicate as the county road. Um, they take care of the plats, the getting all the signatures. So it's fourteen grand. So I don't have any problem with the contract, Dylan, and I'm I'm only concerned on it is that it has to go back to COG for allocation out of the corridor preservation fund. Which I personally am opposed to us having to do that. But those are the rules. So do we vote on now or does it go to COG first? So I think we can vote on it with the recommendation to COG. But, the, but COG ultimately has to approve the funding. So I just had to do that with another road. So my only question, this is, so because this is with Wasatch Civil, that's because it's the county engineer so that we don't have to bid it, right? Right, and ultimately the county div divvies out the money, but COG allocates. And there isn't any other project that we've got coming out of corridor preservation funds, so I'm not worried about there not being money there. It's just by, by the code, we have to, it has to be allocated through COG. So I think we're looking for a motion to approve the proposal from Wasatch Civil for Deep Creek Road dedication with Pending subject approval to by the um, COG approving the funding from the Corridor Preservation Fund. Well, and this is where I see in, I have kind of a conflict because my in-laws live up the end of this road. Well, I'm happy to make the motion for you. So. Yeah, as long as I'm going to vote for it if somebody wants to make a motion. If not, well, I then this becomes a, pri a private, stays a private road. And if you're good with that motion, we that we send it back to COG for approval, then I'll make the motion, Roland. I just want to make that's sure you're fine. good with it. If that's yeah. right now. technically, yes. Yeah. So, Terry, I'll make the motion. Oh, hold it. Just one second. Oh. So, everybody understand, but that, that just goes to the end of the asphalt, the cul de sac that's at the end of the road. Because the private road goes clear up to the ranches. Oh, you mean the part that's going it. to be a toll road? That part? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, yeah. So I'm we're happy just, to so designate that that this only goes to the to the gate for the toll road. Yes. Wait, there's a toll road. Here? <laughs> no. I'm oh. being facetious, <laughs> and it's not necessarily a private road. I mean, it could be acquired by. Okay, and I've talked. I've talked to most. I've talked to most of them. Clarify it so that we can just get it done and publicly get it. Yes. So, 
That's where we are. All right. Member Cannon. All right, Chair, I'll make a motion to approve the proposal from Wasatch Civil for Deep Creek Road dedication with funds to come out of the Corridor Preservation Fund pending approval of COG for the Corridor Preservation Funding. Okay, a motion by Member Cannon, seconded by Member Averett um, for approval subject to COG's approval of use of the corridor preservation funds. Any questions on the motion? I don't have a question, but I just wanted to mention that I'd like to do the exact same thing on the back road at Croydon, so we'll bring that forward a little later. Yeah, they, I talked to Brett about that yesterday, and he and Ty have worked it out, and I think I think it's on our agenda for Monday, but I'll check on it. That's great. Thank you. Member Kilmer, did you hear the motion that we're... I did not hear the motion. Do you want to, or... Deep Creek. Oh. Um, I'm fine with them using that money for that, if that's what the motion is. And it's only, it's just subject to the yeah, COGS to vote approval for it the COG of the use of the funds that way. So don't be late. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Sorry, that was four, not against. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's just a delay. We got it. Thank you. Uh, last item on our agenda, discussion decision. Member Cannon, Mountain Green Sewer District oh. request to be added to the Community Impact Board's capital improvement list at $13.5 million for an upgraded sewer treatment facility. Yeah, this is just the formality of adding it to the CIB list. It got missed in the discussion that we had last time. This, this just allows them to qualify for... Um, CDBG funding and all sorts of other things that has to be on that list. So, it, so does this one have to go to COG too? Because that goes on that. It does go on that list, but it doesn't it have to be, to be a, added to the list. It yeah, be it's a county okay. list, but it, COG doesn't approve it. We just send it to them. So is 13.5 still what you want, right? That's a maximum. Yeah, okay. Is there a motion? Is that 13,500? Yes, that that's exactly how much <laughs> that was. I don't know if that's 13.5 million. Yeah. That's what it is. It, it is. Chair, I'll make a motion to add the Mountain Green Sewer Facility Upgrade to the CIB list in the amount of 13.5 million. Okay, we have a motion by Member Cannon, seconded by Member Newton, uh, to make the Mountain Green Sewer Addition to the Community Impact Board's Capital Improvement Fund at $13.5 million. Any question on the motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So, Jana is creating a master list, and she's kind of keeping that. She'll make sure it gets moved to the next group, whoever's in charge, which they're saying is us. I thought, Stacy, did we do COG last year or the year before, Secretary? I think we did it the year before. The year before? Okay, so we have it coming back up this coming year. Yeah, we were at the city. Yeah, city last year. Last okay. year. So the county is will be taking turn. that responsibility back over next year. And so the, the COG Secretary will be the keeper of that document because it's never... So just so you know, I'll, I'll respond back to her and have her add it then. Yeah. At the when, when that, when your office takes that back over, you just realize that those documents are part of that, and make sure that you transfer them to the next group. So before we adjourn, Chair, we have outstanding CARES grants. Did everyone review? I just need it's more of an administrative item, but I also have one that we probably need to discuss before I send it. I need some I need some feedback from the council but that's not something that I can okay go ahead okay has everyone had a chance to review the seven that are out there no I don't understand my drop box <laughs> all right them while I was sitting here earlier. so mm -hmm. do you have do I need to teach you how to use Dropbox? Because how do I move forward with them? Because I've got another five that are ready to come to you. So if Dropbox isn't working, Roland, do you want me to send them to you one at a time? That would can. help. That would help me. Okay, I can send them to you one at a time. The same way I had to send them to Jeremy. The problem with sending it in that big of a file is it won't send through our 
Yeah, it depends on your servers on both sides. Yeah. So it wouldn't, well, I think I'm on the county, county to county with me sending it to Jeremy, but it would not go. So every, so this is the score sheet on him, but I'm more comfortable if you've actually reviewed it. Those are the, the ones that are coming. Is this one yours? Sorry. You can hear me. I know how to use my drop box. Did you want another one? No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I gave you two. Mm -hmm. Number 27, I'm not... Okay. Well, you haven't got it yet because I haven't send it on. These are okay. the ones that are still in review. Of, if they're in review, okay. they're with the CED board to review. Okay. I'm still compiling information on two more. <sighs> so excited to have these done. And then mm -hmm. at number 27, okay. and I think because of, the, of who it is, I'm going to request that we, because it's proprietary, where's the attorney? Can he come in here to answer this question? He's, he's on the phone. Okay, Jan, I, I need to ask about whether or not we can go into executive session to discuss yes. allocation or if I session. should close session. close session. I don't think it qualifies. Okay. All right. So I have a request that is not a business request. It is a financial institution who is requesting funding. Is that like a bank? Yes. Okay. A bank or other. Or some such. Yes, of some such, because it's not actually a bank. But the requirements that we asked for are, are not necessarily, like tax returns are not the same for a bank as they are for, or for a financial, it's all financial institutions. We're talking banks, credit unions, mortgage companies. Credit union. Those financials are different. And so in order for us to go through this process, I need permission to evaluate in, on different criteria than what we have done for all of the other businesses. And it's getting a little complicated and quite frankly, Because for every business that you see on here, it's a lot of time. So before I send it through another five people to go through the financial documents, I want to make sure that this is in line with what the council had in mind. I don't want to exclude anyone who would qualify, but at the same time, I don't want to go through a process without making sure it's the direction of the board or the council before I send it on to the board for review. So is there any objection to sending it on to review and I will have to, to give adjust, the I will have to Tina and the board the uh, flexibility to adjust, to adjust the yeah. or to consider it in light of slightly different adjust? standards? Because they don't match. Why? They don't do a tax return the same way that a business does a tax return. <clears throat> and so what we use the tax return for is to, is to determine we had a $10,000 proof of income to validate business and in a tax return. So they don't file that tax return, so I'd ask for a prior year's, I can do that through a prior year's financials, but the other thing that's on the tax return is it also determines location of owners. Well, when you're looking at a financial institution with a very set of owners, how do I, do you want that qualification to be the physical location of the business in the county and, and an owner in the county? It, it's not the same process overall where we were, so it's getting a little more complicated is what I'm saying. And then in, in determining so in that argument right there, if it wasn't a bank, it was any other type of business, how would you address it based on our current criteria? So we required a physical location, which the business itself 
calves. So we also then required them to turn in a 1099 that showed the address for the for the in, for the business, but also a, a driver's license of one of the owners to establish that they live in Morgan. So when you say a physical location of the business, are we talking the office or maybe where, let's say they have a home office, and the home office is their business address on their business license, but the physical location for the business is somewhere else. Which one are you using? So the 1099 established the physical, the, phys, the legal location of the business that was on the 1099, but the driver's license established residency. And so that's the part you guys didn't see, but it gets verified by the clerk. But I don't push it through the process until I have established those criteria. So then the other thing that complicates it is ownership. We have not done an entity that has <coughs> this level of ownership where you're looking at, yeah, okay, so I'll just say it. So, so, so on the line. So to determine loss or impact, we were determining impact based on, a lo on lower revenues. And then if, they, if the revenues haven't gone down, as you've looked at them, you've also determined that based on the increase in cost could also cause COVID impact. But if you're looking at the overall cost, well, anyway, I don't want to make this decision on my own, so you guys get to, to think of all of those things. Do you want it to be a financial institution with multiple members? And do you care and do you require any of the members to live in the county? Because it's like I'm starting over. It's not your typical structure. So then let me ask this question. Would Ridley's qualify under your current since it's owned by a company out of Idaho? With the physical location in the county, yeah, as long as it was, well, I don't know how many employees, because we also limited on, they had to be under 50 employees, which I think really still just is. Just so. hypothetically say they have five employees. Yeah, I'm just saying, so. I'm trying to. But the problem is that Ridley would be able, Ridley's would be able to give me a tax return that was able to verify all of those other items, and I can't get that from a financial institution. So I have to know, what did you want? What other form can I ask for that would that would check all the boxes for that to determine? So the the location is here in the county. It's more are we going to waive the financial yeah, so obligation? When I went back to the state of Utah and to UAC, they this is the only time that they're aware of that a financial institution has asked for these funds. So they don't know and pushed it back to that's a council decision. You can decide for yourselves whether or not you want to do that. So I have nothing else to back it up with. Therefore, it needs to be a council level decision and not mine alone. So the financial institution you're talking about, did they have to shut down? Or no. They See, I tried I try to determine how there would be be a negative financial yeah, impact. That's what I'm trying to determine. The financial institution due to COVID, if there wasn't a shutdown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and with Mike. So, so I that places me in a position to speak for them without them being here. But so I, from my understanding, they feel like they had to pay employees for time that was not worked in order to create social distancing and they and they had to close down their lobby which um, would have impacted their ability to do business that but that ability to do business is not reflected in the financial documents submitted which then leads me to the next question of can you document what the other impacts were so that the council can make a decision based on so, impact. So we're making decisions on businesses based on if they can show a loss 
can the financial institutions show a loss of money from this point to this point, just like every other business? Because if not, then in my eyes, they don't qualify. So because that's, that's, that's a separate evaluation so. criteria. I think the only question we need to decide tonight is whether we're comfortable with them evaluating this business that's located in the county but may or may not have a member slash owner who lives in the county as well. Right. I, I don't know who the ownership is at this it point. Could be, they could it have could members be. that are in the county. Yeah. They likely do. From my perspective, that's fine to have it go through the evaluation yeah. process. Yeah. So I will need, I mean, if it gets past the evaluation process, then we'll address it then, whether they qualify. Okay, I'll have them submit it, I would say. Okay, and then with respect to the balance of these, no, what are them. you looking for? So the ones that are before you right now to evaluate are the center section. So I get, you can now see, you see what your, if you haven't gone through them, those are the scores on the middle seven. Seven? Five. Seven. Oh, Seven. so the, the top group is the group we've already Yeah, approved. you've already done the top group. You've got the middle group before you, and the bottom seven are in process. Are in process. Okay. We had hoped to have five of those here for each So week, I think we're going to have a meeting next week. Do you want to go through and approve them next week? Is that what you're saying, after people have looked through what you sent them? Well... That is up to the council as a whole. There are some of these that it's been quite the process for them that they've been waiting a while. I don't think that we've got a check edit list that's going out the rest of this week, but I would like, if we're going to delay one of these in particular, is wanting a freezer. So the last time we spent a lot of time going through and trying to discuss and review and ultimately just made a determination on whether or not their financial statements demonstrated the loss during the period and whether or not their employee number corresponded with the amount of the grant. Which and is already done for us before they get to us, correct? Right. Through the process. Right. But I would... So... I just want to stay quiet. I'm, I'm happy to go through them if you want to individually. But given the way that we did the process last time, I'm not sure that it, it warrants the time if, if we trust the evaluation process itself. Yeah, because I think last time we just said, well, if they qualified through the evaluators, then all of them should receive the money. Correct. Without going through it one by one. So not to prolong this, but since I wasn't here last time, can you just explain to me who it is that's approving or who's evaluating these and making sure that their business is a Morgan County business, not just somebody that lives in Morgan County and has a business somewhere else, that it meets all the financial stuff, all that kind of stuff. If that's the numbers you're using and you're just trusting them, who is this? So before they go through, there are three people that, that see it. Stacy has to verify the W-9 before they go out and that they have a Morgan County business license. So that's the final step when they're after they're unmasked before the check is sent and the assessor's office makes sure that there is no outstanding debt to the county before the check goes out. So, but as far as compiling everything, it comes before, I'm, I see it, I mask it, compile the documents, then it goes out to the C, members of the CED board make up the five people who are evaluating. So they're spending the time to go through all the financial documents and to score them. So that's where you see the composite So are scores. any of these members applicants? No. So in the first batch, yes. So what we did is before it goes to Carol to distribute to a member of the CED board is they cannot be in the, in the organization. So for example, if they're a member of the chamber, I don't let the chamber evaluate. If they are a member, but that's the only one that where the designation is no one from the chamber can evaluate this business and it has to go to the other members of the CED. Mm -hmm. Which is why I couldn't tell Roland that the same people are evaluating them every single time. Because it depends on the type of business. Or is this a membership. competitive process or if they qualify they get it? If they, 
Well, that's up, up to, to you. The amount of well, that was that, we that was part of our discussion. We had we went through all the deals, and the question was, well, if they qualify, what's the purpose of having a score? If you meet the requirements, why are we scoring? Because you have to have proof. Well, to cover CYA over here, I want someone other than me to have gone through this process. We. In the other counties that have done it, the larger counties have a program that evaluates. And we have substituted members of the CED board for that scoring process that is usually done computerized. So basically your evaluators are just, one, making sure they're a business in Morgan County and two, making sure they meet the financial loss. So you're seeing everything that they're seeing and have W-9 forms and whatever else. Well, if that's the case, why are we not getting the identity from the council? If that's they, the CET board doesn't know. At this point, there are two people who know who they are. No, I, I'm saying if, if, based on the way you're saying it went down last time, and you just went off of their recommendation based on what they came up with, why are they worried about hiding it from the council? It's not a matter of hiding, it's, it's keeping it as a blind process so that there isn't, so as they're evaluated, there isn't bias in the process. But if, if the council is not weighing in on that, why are you worried about it? The council has the ability to weigh in on it. What the council chooses to do, the council has the ultimate say, such, even like we were talking about in the contract. Ultimately, so it's up to you to determine. the way you did it? on these seven than you did on the first ones? Pardon me? Are you thinking of changing? Maybe I misunderstood. I thought you said that you just, at the end of your big discussion, you decided we're just going to go off of the recommendation from the review. Yes, but that's just for well, that one we business. we went through all of them. Oh, that was just one business. That's just for the financial institution. It's apparently different process than what the rest are. They have a different... The documents required are different. They don't, no, no, no. They don't do it. No, she, he's talking about... The when we sat here and went through oh, the first yeah. and then ten decided that this deals, was and we're like, well, why do we do this <laughs> if they meet the requirements? That this was a waste of time. Why are we wasting? Yeah. That's all but, I'm saying. If you're, this not, gives you, if you're not going to, to evaluate them, if you're just going to make sure that their numbers match, what difference does it make if the council knows who they are? Because you can go through based on and go review their documents. That's why it's there. You can go through and decide based on the documents that are there whether or not you think they qualify. And I highly recommend you do. Highly recommend you do. But they did. Well, but this is so. This this is where Tina and I disagree. Okay, is I personally. Straight up, I'm not a pro, I'm not voting for any of those until I know who they are. I did it on the last one, and I regretted it. And I feel as a council, we have a right to know who we're giving this money to. If they meet the requirements, one through five, whatever the requirements are, it doesn't matter if I like the person or not. If they meet these requirements... They qualify and they get the money. Well, then why do you need to know the name? Because right. if they meet the requirements, you could. That's why it's there masked because you shouldn't be doing making any part of the decision based on the name. That's why it's there that way. Okay, so you've been in charge of it. Why are you asking council if these if these meet the requirements? Why are we not just paying them? Because the requirement is that the council review. I, I cannot speak for a majority of the council, and it is an allocation of CARES funding. I'm just, I'm confused because I'm being, I, and that's why I say I'm not sure I understand what Robert said. I thought you said on the first ones, you had a big long discussion and realized it was a waste of your time. The numbers are there. They, they dictate that they met the requirements. Just give it to everybody. If you're doing that again, why don't you just give the list of the candidates to the council and say, this is the numbers, they all meet it, or these meet it, these am, don't? Because so. I am strongly recommending that, that at least four of you go through them and review them. And so that when... So you're going to use those numbers as part of this? You're saying to have us review All I'm saying is if they have been reviewed 
and the member council has reviewed what Tina sent, and they're okay with it. We don't have to sit and discuss each of each them. One. But if we haven't had a chance to independently review them, then we can't do that tonight. No, okay. I, I don't want to do anything tonight. <laughs> I'm just trying to understand the process. Yeah. So I think what Tina is saying is those have been submitted. You can review them. From my perspective, Roland, it's helpful. It's helpful for me to be independent and not biased to not know the names of the companies. I didn't. I don't object to members of the council requesting the names if they want to have them. For me, it's easier for me to just look at the the raw numbers and and not have anything else evaluate affect my evaluation of that and review. But I, that's why afterwards you got the names of the businesses. You asked for them and you received them. Yeah, but see, that's part of the, that's part of my question because some of the information I acquired after, one of those businesses is in Layton and the other one's in Lehigh. No, it's not. We don't have anyone in Lehigh or in Layton. Well, that's what I'm saying. So... How, who who of the businesses that have been unmasked? Because that's public information. Who do you think are in Layton and Lehigh? Oh, I'll have to go back and get my papers. Because they're not. So the question is, in terms of timing, if this can't be approved next Tuesday, do, do you want to have a separate meeting for approving these? Or a phone call? Or I guess it can be a virtual meeting. When will you all have an opportunity to review? <laughs> I'll try and work on it this week. I just get through everything else. I didn't know. When's I'm your next check out at list him. deadline? Every Monday. So should we try to have a call on Friday? Yeah, that. I would appreciate it if we got it onto the next list. Here's the businesses from list. Think you can be ready by Friday? I don't know. You want to do it on Friday or do it on before the meeting on Tuesday? If we're going to make the check edit list on Monday, we probably need to have our call on Friday. We never make yeah, a check edit list. Hmm? So we never make a check oh, edit list on Tuesday. <laughs> Roland, I'd like to hear it if you well, one of them doesn't. Well, that's when you approve it. <laughs> right, right. But to get us on the list, business is different by Friday. I cannot do a meeting on Friday. I've got to go to the state football game. So no, no, you don't have to go. Until you told me that like, earlier. Until like one football player tests positive, and right. then there and is no state. <laughs> what about? I'll know Thursday. No, it doesn't affect them. They we already yeah, said they don't tomorrow, affect them. So what about Thursday evening? Testing. What's that? What about Thursday evening? Late you afternoon, evening. What do you say? Thursday, they've got planning commission. This is just an administrative call. Oh, oh, you're talking about just the a council. call. Yeah. Okay. And we can do it early, 5:30. I can probably do that. I am free whenever, because COVID has canceled everything that I was doing. Does that so. mean you have time to do my dog's neck? Yeah. No. Thursday I'm not at 5:30. Does that work for you, Member Cannon? What Thursday? Thursday at, what time? at 5:30. Yeah, but I've already gone through them, so I, I'm not voting on it. So, but I'll be there. I can answer questions. Yes. That is the only thing COVID That's good for you. Be. Mike, are you available Thursday at 530? Sounds like you need to get on this list. Um, I should be able to. Uh, no. Either way, I will go through them. And if I can't be available, I'll send an email with my either approval or disapproval of any of them. And the, the okay. criteria is submitted with this stuff this so they each have an evaluation sheet on there and some of them have notes written on them I but the criteria is there so I can read that yeah. and then go through there yeah there's an evaluation sheet that's been filled out by at least five people okay I will send you an invite for a conference call Thursday at 5:30. Just curious, what is the minimum score you can get? Well, that you can part. Get zero. Yeah. But you can see what everybody's got, so you go through and look at it. And yeah, that's what I'm asking. What's is there a minimum score? 
Well, since I gave six points for being in the county. Six? You have to at least have six. Ultimately, the <laughs> score didn't make a lot of difference. I'm so confused. Correct. I mean, ultimately, it's a confirmation that they're in the county and it submitted financial information that demonstrated that they had a loss. And then there's a corresponding number that associates with the number of employees they have. Therefore, why I didn't apply? Because my business went in just the opposite. You boomed, huh? Yes, because everyone was home smelling their nasty dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Is my only only reasoning on that. I had yeah, to put my dog down just before we left on vacation. Oh. But he went to his maker with freshly clean, clean teeth, new immunizations, and groomed. <laughs> and, and like so I said, he had cancer of the spleen. Oh. And, and I always told Leanne, I said, you know, the day the dog goes in for euthanization will be one of his happy days because he loves the bed. Oh, <laughs> and that place, you know. He, and, but it was, a, it was a tough day. Yeah, it's <laughs> never dog. easy. Yeah. Okay, I'll send an invitation Thursday at 5:30. Let's. Okay, so if I can get the rest of these businesses to through the evaluation process, because I have to write herd on those five people to get them back in. Will you evaluate the others so that we can be done with this and I can have free time again? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. If you can get them to us like Wednesday. Yeah. Okay. Motion to adjourn. That's tomorrow. Told them. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Because I won't have time to finish.